see how stupid you are doing a dirty bird. But, I mean, I was excited. I'd do it again. And, you know, give me a chance to go to the Super Bowl. I'd do dirty bird again. Well, everyone, let's welcome to Atlanta Falcons Nation. This is the Atlanta Falcons Nation tribute to Dan Reeves. Welcome, everybody, to the Friday Night Madness show. So the beginning is a much-needed episode for one of the greatest that has changed the culture of the Atlanta Falcons organization. So former Atlanta Falcons coach Dan Reeves, a Georgia native who led Atlanta's National Football League franchise from 1997 to 2003, died at the age of 77. Reeves was born in Rome, Georgia in 1944. He attended high school in Americus and went on to play college football at the University of South Carolina. Reeves' career in the NFL spanned 38 years as a player, coach, and executive. Reeves played running back for the Dallas Cowboys, where he won Super Bowl. He later joined the Cowboys coaching staff, where he won another championship. He served as head coach for the Denver Broncos, New York Giants, and as well as the Atlanta Falcons. All in all, he took part in nine Super Bowls. I'm going to do a moment of silence for Dan Rees, everyone. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, moment of silence. What's going on, everyone? How are you? Welcome to the Friday Night Madness show. And today we're just wanting to talk to this great, 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 great man. As you guys can see, I'm a little better today. Um, Y'all catching me with no lashes today, but whatever. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so let's start. Um, who wants to kind of build some thoughts and then we'll um go to the chat and see what everybody else is talking about who wants to start just their memory of dan reeves oh uh i like to kind of talk about before kind of his path before getting to um you know obviously the falcon stuff but um I think what's important for people to understand, and this is why I preach um, being patient. Like Dan Reeves was one of those coaches. Yeah, he started out. Um, he, he started out with Denver, and one of the most uh, important things in his career, in my opinion, and that he was the guy. Um, you know. Um, really behind, you know, guys like John Elway and everybody know the story behind John Elway. He started out slow. He started out one of the highest, um, one of the most uh, uh, talented quarterbacks to be drafted. Started out kind of slow, um, ended up, you know, in Denver and, you know, he, he played a significant role in, uh, and the Hall of Fame career of a guy um, like um, John Elway, but he he started off slow, um, kind of picked up. Uh, he ended up getting fired, and um, you know he he's one of those guys that that they grind, they grind their way to the top. He learned from a lot of his mistakes. Okay, he's not one of those coaches that immediately came in and you know earn uh earned very little and was handed guys like aaron donald like he, he didn't hand he wasn't handed anything he grinded his way to the top 
And then he took those lessons that he learned from a lot of his failures in Denver and other places. He took that, molded, and created an offense, a defensive plan from his mistakes. Okay? This is important to say this. From his mistakes, from his failures that we see constantly here in Atlanta. A lot of failures that have been here in Atlanta. This guy came to Atlanta and he changed the culture and he believed in a guy, an African-American quarterback that a lot of people wanted no parts of. Nobody wanted any parts. And excuse me, this is very, I'm passionate about this. Okay, what I'm about to say is I'm really passionate. Nobody wanted to give Michael Vick a shot. But this man from America's Georgia, and everybody know how Georgia is, okay? Georgia has the stigma of being, you know, very quote-unquote racist. But this man from America's Georgia gave a shot to an African-American quarterback that nobody wanted any parts of. They said he could not make it in the NFL and – Guess what? This man traded the form, went up, got Michael Vick, and he brought him to Atlanta. And the rest is history. Michael Vick is one of the most iconic quarterbacks the NFL has ever. He took the league by storm. He created the DVD. Don Vick, Duckett, Algie Crumpler, the defenders that he, he brought in. He was the team president. He brought in guys like Wade Phillips, gave these guys a shot. Greg Knapp, who was the offensive coordinator for him. This man deserves more respect because he gave us one thing that we should never forget. And that's the Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl in his organization. This man deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame. And it's a shame that he did not get there. But we're going to get Mr. Reevedale. He deserves that. And that's my, that's, if anything goes out of this, even talking to guys like Terrence Mathis, you know, Terrence, I, I'm going to just say this right. Terrence is really hurt over this. Chuck Smith, those guys are really hurt. That man was more like a father figure than them. Michael Vick, these guys are hurt over this. Because like I said, he was one of the few coaches in the league that really believed and gave opportunities to running backs like Jamal Anderson. Nobody believed in Jamal Anderson. He was a late-round pick. Look at that. Look at this picture. Look how Jamal was looking at him. Nobody believed in Jamal, but he took that inspiration. He took that faith in, in what a guy who played running back himself, he knew that Jamal would be a great running back. He took that and he molded this young fella. And he became one when he had his shot. And Dan Reeves gave him his shot. He took it, and he what, rushed for almost, you know, 1,700 yards in a season. 1,800, excuse me. All because Mr. Reeves believed in him. Terrence Mathis, another guy that nobody believed in him. He, he left New England, as a, a New York, as a free agent. And Mr. Reeves gave him a shot and became the all-time reception leader here in Atlanta. All because of Dan Reeves. That's my tribute, and that's right there. None of this stuff is scripted. This is from the heart. As a kid who grew up and watched the Dirty Birds, that's what I remember. What you got, K Styles? 
<sighs> I'm feeling it too, yeah. I'm kind of it, it this kind of it it do yeah, hits this, me. This, this one hurts because like, like you said, it, especially coming from me. Um mm -hmm. I know I kind of got into football a little bit late later at the time, even though I've always kind of grown up around like watching the Falcons and stuff. But like for me, kind of paying attention to the game itself. Um one one memory I have, and this this ain't even on the football field. I'm gonna elaborate on what Mike was saying, but um basically I remember right after they won that NFC championship game. And I remember they 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 went to South Lake Mall right before that Super Bowl. And we got a chance to go see them, see the team. And you could feel you could feel the family environment. You could feel you could feel the coaches. The coach Coach Reeves had these guys playing like a family. Like he said, he took a chance on a Jamal Anderson. He took a chance on Ray Buchanan. He took chances on Michael Vick. Like this guy, like like this this guy was kind of he was one of those coaches that you knew, and we just had and we had the interview before where he talked about Keenan Forney and Chris Draft. He was talking about when he walked in there, he demanded respect. And you saw, and like I said, you saw, you saw it. You, you, you saw it. as soon as he, you saw it. This guy was one of the guys responsible for the Hall of Fame career of Shannon Sharp. But oh. you got to remember that. So this guy, he, he, like he, he had an eye for talent, mm -hmm. even though it might have been hidden in the dirt. He knew how to <laughs> dig it, dig it out. He knew how to dig out the, the the best that you could. And like I said, he is, like I said, he 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 was Atlanta for a while. Um, like he I said, actually, we, he was in Atlanta when he actually passed away. Mm -hmm. It's almost kind. It almost it's almost kind of like a poetic end to a legendary coach. Oh yeah. Hmm. Like you said, he made his name in Denver. Like you said, the first Super Bowl appearance in this franchise history was under this guy. In a season that nobody thought we was even going to make it that far. Mm -hmm. Hell, we didn't even know they was going to make it that far. Hell, we didn't know they was only going to lose two games that year. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but what, but like I said, what you saw was you saw the dogs, you saw the fight, you saw the players out there playing their asses off. And this, and this was attributed to him because he knew how to get the best out of everybody. It's, well, it's, it's crazy, man. It's like you said, we losing a lot of people. But as a like I said, as a Falcon fan, I think this one hurts a lot. It just it hurts a lot because hell, even he was one of the brains behind Georgia State having a football team. So Georgia like State. I said, he 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 knew how to find gems out of the dirt. Hey, Shannon, hey, man. One, one thing Shannon said that that stuck with me is that we don't see a lot of is, you know, um, coaches where he, he he said on his show he was like, you know, he was on the brink of <laughs> being cut. He had been cut for the team. And oh yeah, and he made a position for him. He <laughs> literally made a position for Shannon because he believed in him, and he had to. You know, sell the coach <laughs> on keeping Shannon. He was like, "This guy's mm -hmm. gonna be," it. and like I said, this this man fought for his players, and that's that's that right there is that's that like I said, that's everything because like again, I don't Michael Vick, he set the world on fire before he even got to the NFL. Like he was the he was college, he was everything in college. 
You couldn't watch a college game without a break. <laughs> oh, let's go to break the Virginia. You know, Virginia Tech. Michael Vick, the great Michael Vick, just rushed for two hundred yards. Like this, this is what Michael Vick was before he got here. And mm-hmm. nobody, it, the question was almost like Lamar Jackson, where people were questioning whether or not he can be a quarterback. So he was on a lot of scrutiny from his peers to like this guy's not gonna be in this why guy this is why um San Diego didn't want to take him because they were questioning whether or not he was gonna be a good quarterback. You know, Michael Vick, I, I can always I, I would say this about Michael Vick, and I can honestly say this now is because he knew that this man was not BSing him. You could look at the look, the picture where he, yeah. you guys uh, can see the picture. I don't know if we got the picture, but the picture of him looking in Michael Vick's eyes. Oh, I didn't put that in that one. I didn't put that one up. That, that picture is everything. That's how you, that's how you get players behind you. That's how you get people behind you. Sincerity, honesty. Mm-hmm. The look that Jamal. Terrence Mathis sent us a picture today, and the mm-hmm. look that he had. Yeah. I can put that back up. <laughs> the nose, the look that he had, he looked at those guys like they were his babies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They were his babies. And that's and he well, said we, this made him tear up when somebody yeah. sent that to him today. Mm-hmm. Like a loving father. Yeah. A Just loving embrace. Mm-hmm. Look at that. It's yeah. nothing fake about that. We mm-hmm. we live in a time where people are making hundreds of millions of dollars to play a game. But this right here, mm-hmm. that's like this is what coaching is about. And that I right want to add. And I want to add to it, you know, um, for one thing, like, like, you know, Kay Styles and, you know, Matt Mike said, yes, I watched the Falcons all my life with my father, but it was mm-hmm. around this time when I really understood the game of football. Mm-hmm. Back then, you already knew that the Falcons wasn't even on TV. Mm-hmm. It was all about the, the Cowboys. So I was seeing more other teams versus the Falcons. Let's get real. Mm-hmm. So this team... Well, prime time, of course, you know, but this team made me love. And one thing I'm going to say that um, I want to say that Dunn said on a previous interview I was just going through, he said he made this team made him proud to be Atlanta Falcon Mm -hmm. because of the energy it brought to the city. Like they sleep on this town, but we had everything. And William if you are were watching, put your thumbs up if you was watching. I would definitely let you come on and put some, you know, words up. If you was watching it during that time, you can put some words up too. Cause I didn't know. I didn't ask. So we're gonna have William on the screen too, if he wanna throw some words in, because I didn't even know his history, you know, it's kind of interesting. But um, I'm putting you on the stream. Um, so the whole city, it was like it was almost like how you go to the Saints, you know, New Orleans. Everywhere you go, you got Saints everything. At that time, you had the Letterman jackets. You had the the old logos. You had the the Dirty Bird dance. You had kids in school in, in, in gyms doing the Dirty Bird dance. You had the song, Atlanta Falcon Win, do, 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 that Dirty Bird. Y'all remember that? Like, it was just... I can't find that song anymore, but it was fun. It was exciting. You wanted to be there. Then you brought in Michael Vick. You couldn't tell me nothing about my Falcons. It's like, I got Michael Vick on my team, you know? So that was definitely, Mike, if you could find that, I would love to have that picture up later on, you know, um, because you got the post. I want to see it. Um, you know what that energy was and he took care of that man hello so i just feel like this was my era even though i was watching for a long time but 
this was my era of the time where I really truly enjoyed being a Falcons fan. And of course, just that exciting, what's that, the Vikings game, everything that led up to the Super Bowl, you know, that was an electrifying time. It was like I skipped school to be in the concert. Look at my mug. <laughs> I, um, I skipped school, to, not concert, the parade. Me and my twin sister, we was like, um, we are not going to school today because the Falcons got a parade. And sure enough, we recorded it on the v video of VCR and everything. Like, I wish I could find that tape, you guys, because Dan Reed was doing the dirty bird on stage. It was like, Dan Reed, do that dirty bird. They was on there, Jamal Anderson, everybody, Chuck Smith, all of them was in there doing their thing, you know? And um, that was an exciting time. You know, so he just needs to be honored. And the Atlanta Falcons, like um, Terrence Mathis is, it's like they need to do him a real tribute, not just a picture on the post. It needs to be an actual tribute right before this game. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. So, Will, you want to add something? About Dan Reeves, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, yeah. Um, what first the yeah, what I first noticed and what kind of first turned me on to the NFL, I tuned into a, to a Falcons Vikings game and I and I vowed I would I said the team that wins this game is going to be my team, and that had to be the day where Michael Vick just decided to run absolute rough shot on the Vikings D. So I was like, yeah, I'm I'm repping with these guys from now on. Um, <laughs> my my memories of Dan were toward the end of his career, but. Um, I mean, the credentials speak for themselves. I mean, nine visits to the Super Bowl, four different teams, the amount of Hall of Famers that he that he brought along. It's a no-brainer that this man has to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, we need to put more respect on his name, in my opinion. Uh, he doesn't get mentioned enough along the sort of the upper echelon of coaches, for me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. You know. Um... That's why it's, it's unfortunate he didn't get the Hall of Fame, you know, because it's like nine Super Bowls appearances. And the love that the team had for him, wants the players. Mm -hmm. You know, the superstars no, he brought out Everyone that. Else wants to remind us of Belichick. Yeah. And you're breaking up just a little bit, William. Just a little bit, just to let you know. Uh, but that's the picture. My apologies. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's beautiful. Those are my birds. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, just, just think about it. If, if you if, if Dan Reeves probably would have stuck around longer, Michael mm -hmm. Vick probably would have been a better quarterback. That he fought yeah. tooth and nail. They fought tooth and nail for each other. Mm -hmm. They did. Mm -hmm. They was a family. I think Terrence Mathis on the previous episode, he said Just they used kid. to buy each other dinner. You know, they'll go out to eat as a family and just do things like the rookies would foot the bill. So if it was more than one rookie, they split the bill type of situation. Mm -hmm. So it was just like it was um, honor, respect of your the veteran player. You had to go to that player before you can get to the head coach to discuss anything. Mm -hmm. It was that type of sort of situation in that. And like Mike said, you straighten up when Dan Reeves came into the uh in the coaching room. Uh -oh, it's yeah. like, oh mm -hmm. no, you don't play. And they was um dressed to the to the nines. They they suit and tie. It wasn't no look no regular outfits. They came to dress professional, you know. Mm -hmm. So I just enjoyed that this the you know, the integrity that he put on his team and his organization. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to add anything? I just feel like he commands a level of respect that the, the current coaches evidently don't get. I mean, what we were talking about um, earlier on this morning with Calvin, mm -hmm. could you really see that situation happening in a Dan Reeves-led team? Because I sure don't. Oh, no. uh, mm -hmm. I just think that we need to get back to that mentality that he brought to the team. 
um, we have to be more accountable. But as for ourselves, we have to look for look out for our, our fellow birds. I mean, there's 53 brothers there, not counting the coaching staff. And there's mm-hmm. almost dad, if you will, got your back all the way. So, I mean, if we can, if we can aim to kind of get back to that, I think we'll be doing okay. Well, I got a point to ask. Do you think that Arthur Smith is that coach that's getting that accountability back into this organization based on what you've seen so far? Hmm. What do you think? Interesting. Personally, I think it's too early to tell. I think he needs a second mm-hmm. year. Uh, yeah. Because going into this season, there was a lot of people who didn't even think we'd be anywhere near seven wins. Um, well, I'll say it because hopefully we beat the the Aints on Sunday. But I mean, we were we were projected to be a four or five win team. So I think he he definitely knows what he's doing. It's just we've been in a bad situation for quite a few years now. So it's it's going to be more than a one year fix um, for sure. But I think we need to to give him the opportunity. I think he he's at least earned another season in my book. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, I I feel like to that answer, the question is like I felt that you could see it a little bit though. It was basically everyone was starting to step up and prove themselves, you know. So that accountability is starting to reflect. But yeah, it is way too early for that, you know, to determine that. But it's like I did see a difference in the attitude of these players. It wasn't that babysitting, um, cry baby. Mm-hmm oh, let me get my way type of attitude. It was like, I got to prove myself right about now because he's going to sit me down. What do you guys think? Yeah, I, I think um, one thing I, I, I appreciate with Arthur is that when we talk about, and this is something, um, I can see the effect that it has on Matt Ryan. And um, Matt Ryan obviously is the guy that, he's going to go to bat for his his players i can see little words you know things here and there what matt ryan says you know when we're talking about whether or not um you know cordero patterson is going to come back matt ryan says you know he wants him back as a teammate but he understands his business so he's not going to bat for players because now they understand that you have to work for your spot. And if, even if you don't come back, you know what I'm saying? Like, e- even if you want him back, there's a possibility that you, he's not going to come back and he's not going to back for guys again. So I, I think kind of lost that sense of um, hard work. Um, players just, look, we, they pay, they been paid. Look, I'm going to just start beating around the bush, okay? Players are just Spoiled as hell to these days. Okay, they're a spoiled freaking rot. You make a hundred million dollars for sitting on your behind these days. Okay, you can just run a four four. I don't have to practice. I don't have to work hard. I don't have to do this and I don't have to do that. My agent to do it. My my pe- my you know my publisher do it. These guys are spoiled freaking rot. They can act like absolute babies and cry on the field, throw their helmet, take their shirt off, and throw it in the stands and do this and do that. And you still get a paycheck. Why? Because you're bigger than life. He sells tickets. He does this. He does that. We need to get back to, look, this is about the team. If you are are on board with the team and our philosophy, and you're going nowhere. You can go bye-bye. And that's one thing I'll always say, even though they have a long history of cheating, I can respect for Bill Belichick. You're never bigger than a team. Tom Brady thought he was bigger than a team, Mm -hmm. and he would just get his way in New England, and Bill said, hell no, we can do it without – we'll do it without you. We can move on. You're not bigger than a team. This is a team. We're going to build a proper way, and that's something that I feel as though Arthur is setting a standard. This is why Julio – let's just be honest. Stop beating around the bush. This is why Julio left. This is why Calvin is in his feelings, okay? 
This is why he's in his feelings. There's no other, it's no other reason we can sit up here and say, uh, you know, it's mental health, and I'm very, I'm very empathetic as uh, as far as the mental health issues. Yeah, look, I look, I'm out, I'm mad, Mike. Okay, I'm mad, Mike. Everybody think I'm crazy anyway. So trust me, I've had my break, my sure breakdowns too. Okay, so I'm very empathetic as far as that is concerned. But at the end of the day. No player should be above the team. That's something I always respect out of Bill Belichick. That's what I always respect out of Matt Ryan, and that's why I'll always go to bat for him because even though he has one of the best games, his team play like absolute crap, he still goes and say, man, I, I, I could if I could have did this, if I could have done this, we would have won the game. He takes all the blame. That right there is a leader, and that's what players should be doing. That's what we need more from our players instead of saying, oh, man, I'm Julio Jones. I, look, look at my ring. Look at look at the, look at the chain with the chip. Come on, man. Get out of here with that mess, man. We I want to get to this. And I want to get to this comment because it's just it's, he just put so much effort into this one about Dan Reeves. He said, Dan Reeves was the first coach that the Falcons ever hired where I actually felt someone with a good professional background. And he said mm -hmm. that bold had come to help. He'll be missed by many. Rest in peace, Coach Reeves. Well mm -hmm. said, uh, Ghost Peppers. Well said. Absolutely. But but as far as the question yeah, that you had asked. Almost. Oh, shit. My bad. Mm -hmm. My bad. Uh, I'm about to say, as far as the question that you had asked, Maggie, my bad, my bad, my bad. I didn't know what was going on. But, yeah, uh, is, can Arthur Smith be like Dan Reeves as far as the accountability? Yes, you see it on the field. Like yeah. he did. You, you, you took, and we said, we said it earlier this week, you took a team of misfits. It's just the Falcons are misfits this year. Yeah. And did more with them than what the previous regime did with the team the last three or four years. And like you said, all that comes down is accountability. I mean, you don't hear Arthur Smith in the press conferences talking about, well, um, we we play, we we were pissed off, and um, we're going to come in pissed off next week, and then you see the same damn result. We don't, <laughs> we don't see that. Like even, uh, <laughs> even with even with him handling the Calvin Ridley thing, he keep like he'll tell you like it's the same. He he gives the same answer about that. He's worried about the fifty three man roster. Them the only guys he's worried about. He's worried about getting them guys better. Mm -hmm. So yes, he definitely got a chance. Think, you know, in, in terms of. Well, when you are mentioning that whole kind of diva attitude, it just kind of throws me back to uh, it was a, an old Dallas Cowboys video I was watching uh, of uh, Michael Irvin, uh, and he makes this ridiculous one-handed catch and goes over to his head coach who basically tells him, yeah, don't be pretty, be good. We don't want your diva attitude. We don't want you to try and be Superman. We mm -hmm. just want you to pull on that red and black jersey and go to work. Do your job. The 53 guys do their job. We're winning the game. Absolutely, and then that's 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 what Arthur Smith is bringing back. It's like uh, I don't care all that, you know, you know, I don't care who's a superstar, or whatever y'all trying to make it. Everybody has a job, and everybody's gonna do that job. You're not gonna sit on the sideline because you just don't feel like practicing today. You coming in and you going to practice. Bottom line. So what I liked about what mm -hmm. Arthur Smith said in his first meeting is like I'm not worried about somebody that's not on the field. So next question, please. So he meant business from the beginning. So I feel like the more we get the, those players that he want, we're going to see a lot more of that in the next season. So I actually can't wait to see what this offseason – I'm excited about the offseason at this point. I can't wait to see what we're going to get. Yeah, I'm looking forward to chatting draft wheel. I think that's going to be a lot of fun because there's a lot of different ways we could go. You know, edge, offensive line, receiver – there's a, there's a few places we could bolster up. So uh, be a few interesting chats uh, come, coming down the line. 
Yeah. And we did um last season, we did a whole three days of just full draft show. I don't know what we're gonna do this year. I don't know if we're gonna end up doing that again. I think we were saying we're gonna do shifts, but we sat through the entire first two rounds and a little bit of the third, I think. Wasn't Process. it the third too? Whew. Yeah, that was long. Yeah, that was me and Mike did a we did overtime that, that week. But and it's funny because people <laughs> sat there and watched it with us the whole time. They remember parts, especially when the cow pits came, you know, that came. We just Everybody was on here like, yeah. And then, of course, we were seeing the chat. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, we didn't get a quarterback. You know, oh, my God. You know, <laughs> panic everybody. Mm -hmm. So that that our reaction, it was hilarious. I think we <laughs> had um, who we have on there. We Matt only Carley. Had, I think, Matt, Matt Carley. Carley. It was Matt Carley. So we all in here cheering. You. <laughs> that was fun. So we're going to do it again this year, but we're going to do it in shifts. Me and Mike is not going to sit on for five hours with y'all. <laughs> No, oh, man. you know, I'm taking a smoke break. I'm 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 walking well, away. I'm, I'm, I'm you gonna be there as, as the new blood. I'll put myself in the in the back. So we got a volunteer. Good, good, good. Good, good. We're gonna need we're gonna need shifts. We're gonna need everybody oh, putting oh, you know, oh, all punishment. <laughs> But guys, I'm not really feeling all that great, as you can see. No makeup. I mean, well, I don't do no makeup. I do a little couple of lashes, whatever. But I'm draining, so I just wanted to do that tribute. I appreciate you guys letting me hang on with you guys. I appreciate you guys tuning in to me this morning. That was an impromptu thing because I had the energy, but I'm I'm starting to feel that fatigue again. So I would love to hang with you guys, but I'm gonna go ahead and um bounce off. Okay, you know y'all be safe. Um, if you got COVID. Plenty and plenty of Gatorade, people. But this this is what I'm surviving off of. So I appreciate everybody. I was like, I, I'm going to do this regardless of how I feel. I just really wanted to do a tribute um, with Dan Reeves, you know. So rest in peace to him, you guys. And um, appreciate you guys. Okay, I'm out. All right, get better. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Before we like, anything else, uh, I want to... What's up? Well, what's up? You kind of no, break it up. I to thank you all again for having me. <laughs> oh, 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 no, no problem. problem. Oh, shoot. Hey, man, we always open. I you just wanted to go. thank you. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But, so, hey, like I said. How are you guys feeling about Sunday then? You think we can win that? Of course. Woo. Of course. I, th I think we can win it. I think we can win Sunday. I mean, like you said, any game is winnable. Um, It's just, like you said, now you got nothing to lose, so you ain't got no choice if you got pride on the line. <laughs> you got pride on the line. You ain't got yeah. no choice. <laughs> but you think you, con you confident in the game? Yeah, no. Um, I think <laughs> it depends if you want to rest Kyle or not. Obviously, he's still struggling a little bit, so it depends uh -huh. how limited he is tomorrow at practice um, mm -hmm. as to how effective he's going to be. Um, but you take into account if we can if we can contain well enough and we can stop those little quarterback draws that Taysom loves to to run so much. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we can beat this team for sure. I like, yeah, we I like need uh, to step up. <laughs> yeah, we got the tough. The he, he, he always points that out, tackling. The tackling issues is something we always focus on. Oh, yeah. I, I do, I think, I, um, I, I think they can definitely uh, win. Obviously, uh, it really rests on the shoulders of Kyle Pitts. If he can play. Um, I, I, we definitely have a shot. Um, obviously, I think we all want him to break the record um, as far as the tight ends record and yards in the season. Um, we want to see that happen. Um, okay. But I, I just want to see him go out. Like I said, I, I want to see those guys go out. It's the last game of the season. 
and I, I I need to see you know open up the playbook on both sides of the ball. Like don't play you know you know yeah. too crazy, but go you know open it up a bit. Um, I just I I need to see more. You know what I'm saying? What could potentially be if we had those players? Even if you're if if you don't have the players. I need to see what you could potentially do on both sides of the ball. Um, if we just if we had those players and and one player in particular that I'm, I'm I've said this before, um, but I just need to see more out of Dante Fowler. Um, he, he, yeah. He's been a great disappointment. <laughs> he's yeah, been a I disappointment for a guy that's making so much money. Yeah, I made I made the point of that this morning. I mean, seven <laughs> sacks in two years. Oh, that's that that's not forty million dollars worth of DN to me. <laughs> not thirty million dollars. Thirty million dollars worth of seven sacks. Thirty million dollars. Come on, man. Shit. You talk about thirty million dollars worth of kung fu kicks. That's all I see from them is kung fu kicks. I like I, 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 I'm 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 sorry. Like I said, I it's I try to have faith in him and all that <laughs> stuff. But every time he's in, every time he on the field, like I said, and the bad thing about it is he could have at least nine sacks this year if he stayed mm-hmm. on his feet. <laughs> he always want to jump and die. <laughs> he's almost there. He dives at the quarterback. Like why are you? He's right. In front of you, why are you diving at his feet? Diving at his head, like. <sighs> and that, and that just—you would be the issue. Madden player who always tackles. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, 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 yeah, he. Do, yeah, like you say, he the Madden player that um that 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 would get to the quarterback, but for some reason get warped away from the quarterback. That's him. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god! Oh, like I said, I, I don't know. I now, now that y'all think about it, I, 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 and Tyler Davidson is gonna be playing too. Oh lord! Damn, now I might change my mind. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. But yeah, take that back. I might, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fifty fifty now. I just thought about it, and then um, shit. One of my homies, one of my homies, he sent me a stat on Stephen Means too, and he said in thirteen games. This is a shout out to ATM. Uh, let me go ahead. I'm bring it up. And he he sent this to me. He said, um, Stephen Means in thirteen games has zero sacks, one tackle for loss, and two quarterback hits. <laughs> oh, Christ, that is bad. <laughs> that, that 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 is that's it that's insane man and it's like oh it's gonna have to come down to the off like like I said it they just gonna have to um hopefully make some plays on defense to it's it's gonna have to come down to that because I can't yeah Dante Fowler him disgusting. bringing up that mm-hmm. but it doesn't but, make for great reading when you when you look at it and it's that were double digit sacks behind the next <laughs> lowest team. Like Jacksonville's got 29, New York's got 29, and there we are sitting at 17 sacks <laughs> as a team on the year. It's just like, come on, there's players right. going out for 17, and we've got that. Right. Team. <laughs> right. And like, the, but that's why I was saying as well as, um, this is the last game because everybody's going to, everybody's going to be playing for contracts next year. So you're going to have to mm-hmm. bring out, bring out everything, and you don't bring out everything, but we're gonna be still sitting here, uh, talking trash <laughs> about the, the the X number of players that we saw did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I'm about to say so as as far as the season, as far as the season went, how did you feel? How you feel about how this season went for? Them? I feel like we lost too many close games. That Washington one stung. That one really stung. Right. Because we're better than that team, in my opinion. 
uh, there's there's games that we had no right to lose. The cat the the first one against Carolina that was atrocious. I mean, yeah. it's the inconsistency that gets me. I mean, we can go up there and play our hearts out and give Buffalo a damn good game in the snow. And I mean, the last time the Falcons played in the snow was what well, I want to say Green Bay, uh, twenty fifteen. So mm-hmm. we don't always get snow days, but mm-hmm. we 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 turned up that day. But yet we can't bring not all three phases turn up at once. The offense will be great, but the defense is woeful. Or if the defense steps up, Matt's not connecting with his guys on offense. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like there's been a game all season where we've turned up offense, defense, and special teams. You know. You know. Right. 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 Yeah, um, that that what I said before, man. It's like um, we took a whole team of misfits and got about seven wins out of them. That, like I said, that right there in itself is a major accomplishment, especially when most, like you said earlier, when most people thought there was a four or five win team. I mean, what more yeah, can you say? For sure. Um, I just think um. Like you said, the close games, um, really, yeah, because the San Francisco game was a lot closer than the score seemed. That's just was not taking advantage yeah. of opportunities. Um, you said the Carolina mm-hmm. game, that was another one. Washington, yeah, yeah, it, it was like it was just like bad plays all over, man. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in one of my people. We're gonna bring in one of my peoples in here too. Um, money man, you in here? What's going on? What's going on, everybody? What's, What's up, going Atlanta on? Talkers Nation? What's going on? It's all about the money. What's going on? Well, all right, man. What 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 you got? What you got on? How'd you feel about Dan Reeves? What well, how'd you feel about that? Um, uh, with Dan Reeves, you know, during his era. Um, I was a baby. I was number was three years old. Oh, okay. You know, I, I was born in ninety one, so oh, okay. you know, I don't too much remember him or whatever. So, okay. but I remember. Um, I think some of his guys was with. Uh, you remember the kickoff return of Rossum mm-hmm. and all that? Yeah. And Warren Dunn. Um, I remember Grump. Um, Algie Crumpley. Mm-hmm. I remember them. Um, that's far as I can remember. Okay. That's what with the, with the squad with Michael Vick. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, because you it, you you did remember that season as far as that Michael that um one Michael Vick season, and what was your and what was your thoughts on that season as far as how Dan Reeves taught coached this team? If that's the um, season you remember, see back then, um, that's the season I remember. So back then. Um, I was I was I was a little boy, so you know I'm still learning football. Just you know, getting into playing the little league pot water, so I was still understanding it. But okay. when you go back and look at film on YouTube from those days, like we really, we really was balling back then. Like okay. we really was balling because I think in one of the years I think he went to a Super Bowl. We went to a Super Bowl in what ninety one, ninety ninety eight. Eight. 98. 90, 98. Okay, okay. 98, yeah. But, yeah, that was like, that was a little early. I was number what, what, about two years old, one or two years old, three years old. Man, you are young. It's <laughs> 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 angry. It's angry. Well, I feel, I'm feeling all older and shit now because I'm like, damn. But, yeah, man, it was, it was some fun times, man, and it was just unfortunate that – the year Michael Vick got hurt and him trying to get back, and he just eventually – he was not the coach here no more after the old three season. Yeah, mm-hmm. after the old three season, he was not the coach here no more, and we unfortunately had um, uh, Jim Moore yes, Jr., who, who didn't show the same accountability as Dan Reeves did, and you saw it on the field. Mm-hmm. But Mike, you want to go ahead and get into what I think what the main thing we want to get into tonight is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want to go ahead and get into it. 
Let's get it, brother. We're gonna go ahead and do it like this. Uh Calvin Ridley. <laughs> oh. Woo, Calvin boy. Ridley. Lord the have mercy. Gritty. Let's get to we the gonna, nitty gritty. We, 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 about, we about to really get into this. Uh, we kind of got into it a little bit yesterday. Uh, let's really get into it. Okay, so a lot of people already know this is one of the main trending things going on right now. Uh Calvin really putting up the Snapchat of his stats. Um, I sent the picture. I forgot the picture. Brian Fenner tweeted back like, "What the hell is he? What the hell are we supposed to do with this?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So I mean, I'm, say, I'm about to say, I'm about to say, like, what, like, what, what, what? Okay, so Set my thing up, is with with how how this went. What do you think was the purpose of them him doing that? You want me to get it out of the way because I'm I'm getting irritated. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. You may you, you, you might you you might be pissed off, Mike, tonight with this one. All uh, right, go uh, ahead. I, I'm good. First of all, I don't give a fuck about no disclaimer or none of that shit. So you can take it however the hell you want to take it from this point. This Friday night, man, and y'all know how it goes, uh, how Friday night, man, it goes. So I'm going to just give it to you real raw, all of it. Um, the, hell with it. the hell with your opinion about me. Like I said, I'm, I'm just going to give it to you real, dig to you raw. I'll, I'll leave the consequences for what they are. I don't give a shit. Um, it was fucking selfish. It was selfish as hell. I'm not gonna get into the mental uh, uh, issues. I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. I'm talking about the actions itself. It was selfish as fuck. Your teammates, okay? Like I said, night. Matt Ryan is on the on, on, he's on the field getting his ass kicked. Jay, um, Jalen Mayfield. This guy's been thrown into. You know, the, uh, he's been thrown in the fire as a rookie offensive lineman. He getting his ass beat. Matt Hennessy, this is his first full year as an offensive lineman. He's getting his ass whipped. We have no wide receivers with experience other than Tajay Sharp. These guys barely have four years experience in the league with significant, okay, with significant playing time. Zacchaeus was a guy who was a role player. Again, yeah, he's been in the league, what, two, three years, but he hasn't had significant playing time. So you left these guys on this team thinking, oh, Calvin Ridley's really going to be the star. Okay, I don't, I, I know, I, I know he's going to be there. This is my guy. He'll never leave us. On to say, he's gone. Mental issues. Okay, that's fine. Now we're gonna address the elephant in the room. Whether he was at the Alabama game or not, I, I have several people that come out and said, "Yeah, they saw him there." Okay, let's just keep that. Let's just we've had several people say that he's been there. So I'm just gonna say this: it was selfish as hell. This is this is about your teammates. When you're when you are when we're talking about team, the team isn't the Calvin Ridley's. This is not the Atlanta Calvin Ridley's, okay? This is about the Atlanta Falcons. You love your teammates. You're supposed to love your freaking teammates. You're supposed to be there as a teammate, and you are a captain. They chose you to be a captain, a leader amongst the uh, in the, on the office you you were chosen to be and you you took that on so even if you're not there stand on the sideline clap if you can't walk if you don't want to be there tweet something your fans they believe you they love you kid little kids look my nephew, there's a lot of kids out here. They 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 idolize and they want a Calvin Ridley jersey. You know how many people have spent so much money 
they hard earned money just to get a Calvin Ridley jersey, and then the next thing they know, they see Calvin Ridley. Nope, Calvin Ridley, he's not there. He wants to tweet a picture of his fucking stats. Not everybody, you know, not, 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 he's not, he's not tweeting or whatever the hell you call Snapchat. I don't know what the hell you call Snapchat taking snaps. I don't, I don't fucking know. Um, Whatever the fuck um, it is, it just, it was a picture I'll, on there. It's a damn picture. That's oh. <laughs> who, the, oh. who the hell, that's a, who the hell even on no. Snapchat? Oh. Who the fuck oh. is on Snapchat? Oh. 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 You know what? And you might you just brought up a good point. You just brought up something I just thought about. Maybe the reason why he put it on Snapchat is because if you put a picture up, it only lasts a certain amount of time. Yeah, it's only twenty four hours. And what? he didn't think nobody was gonna catch on. Somebody mm-hmm. caught that. <laughs> Somebody caught. It. So, like I said before, I don't give a damn about none of that mental issue. That, look, we're talking about his actions, uh, about his actions, 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 actions. Because when we talk about mental health, mental health leaves a trail. It uses patterns. Anybody who's had any type of mental issue, they've had some sort of breakdown, whether they're not eating, they're not talking, they're not leaving their job, you know, they, they don't want to be around their friends. It's something. Patterns. This guy wasn't arrested. He didn't beat up a woman. He didn't get beat up. He didn't run from the police. He didn't get caught with a pound of weed in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in his back of his car. He didn't. He, it was none of that shit. He's been a perfect goddamn angel. He's been a perfect fucking angel, okay? And, and like I said, excuse my damn language. He's been a perfect fucking angel, and we're supposed to believe I have mental issues. I'm telling you right now, I've had breakdowns, and I was far from a perfect angel, okay? Yeah, boy, man, Mike was perfect, far from perfect when I had my issues. So at the end of the day, we have his actions to speak. He didn't praise Matt Ryan for hanging there, hanging there, buddy, we're going to do it next time. Nope, he didn't do that. He posts a goddamn picture of me, look at me, Calvin Ridley, look at my stats. It was him. He posted a picture of his damn self. He posted a picture of him, <laughs> not, the, not the team stats, not Matt Ryan stats, not someone else. He didn't post a picture of the team was eight and nine or seven and nine or whatever the hell we are right now. He didn't do that for the team. He posted pictures of him, you. Okay, that's what he did. He did that of him. So all of these people, please, if you want to come for me, I'm ready for it. But at the end of the day, Calvin really chose what he wanted to do for his goddamn self. It's him. He focused on him, and that's why I have the damn problem there. Not the team. He wanted the focus to be on him. Not the team. And that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, man. I'll okay. I feel be honest with you. I feel like he took like like my I ain't gonna say like my said, like I've been thinking, he literally took a dig at the whole team by doing that. Like most people might not think, okay, he took a picture of his stats. Okay, we see the career, da, 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 da. but think about the year. Think about the year the Falcons are having at the receipt at, at as a, as a receiving core in itself. This is literally one of the rated worst wide receiver, wide, worst receiving cores in the league statistically and visually. So when you put something out there like, look at my stats. You're basically throwing shade. You, he's basically throwing shade at the other guys that are still out there. Now, when we talking about the mental issue thing and mental issue thing, you got a guy on the team that's an advocate for mental mental wealth 
mental health awareness and, and Hayden Hurst that you could talk to. But he chose not to. To be honest with you, I think who I think he I think Calvin's been talking to Julio this whole season. Think about this for a second. Calvin really went out with mental health with, with, with mental health. Julio literally went out around the same exact time, even though he was hurt and ain't played since before last week. You got 53 guys out here who's busting their ass, trying to play the best they can. Even though, like I said, we talk shit about, okay, this team is not that good. We know they're not that good. You're a captain for a reason, bro. You're supposed to be a leader. And the reason why we're coming at it like this is because if we find out that this fool used the excuse of mental uh, mental health as an excuse to wanting to get out of Atlanta, Oh, oh, you can forget about trading him for anything higher than a fourth round pick because that looks bad in locker rooms. I know y'all don't want, I know y'all thinking first round, second round pick, but, but stuff comes out. And if he, like I said, if he used this as an excuse to get out of Atlanta because his homeboy ain't here. Ooh, it don't look good for him. It don't look good for us. We literally lost two of our best receivers literally in the same year. Think about that. All right. Let's see. Gonna bring on. We got some folks in here. Hey, I want to touch up on that too, Styles. Go ahead. What you got for us? All right. You remember the first time when Kevin really went out, right? Mm-hmm. The same exact thing what you just said, I said it. And you remember you and Mike, y'all laughed at me. You remember that? Y'all laughed right, right, at right. me. I said, right. Julio and that man ill. I said, I want to be surprised if they get him in if, if Tennessee trying to buy this contract next year so he could be back with Julio. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like you got to realize when that man came to Atlanta, Julio embraced that man. So his whole Kevin really whole career he been playing under Julio, and now Julio is being snatched away from you. You are gonna feel like nothing no more, right? You gonna mm-hmm. feel like your 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 dog your best friend just died, right? Mm-hmm. That's how he felt, and he felt like he couldn't do it no longer. He couldn't do it no more without Julio. And it, and, it, and it got him mentally. And he did that to get out of Atlanta. Because you got certain players can't play with nobody but that player. Right. Just like with Tom Brady and Gronk. They had that connection. Right. Man. But before we get to the next if one. It's true put, if it's true that he's put these stats up just to troll us. Trade these ass to Jacksonville. I don't give a fuck anymore. <laughs> like honestly, if if that's the way he wants to be, get get him out. Yeah, yeah, man. Because like I said, that it, the, it's like the it's like every move that he done made, every move this year, as far as Calvin and like I said, with Calvin has been real sh- real fishy, and it, it 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 don't look right. But before we get some more other people on here, I see you, LT. I see you, TJ, in the back. Let me get this um, $5 super chat here. Uh, Big Sir said, Roddy White, the only wide receiver out of, Alabama, out, of, out of an Alabama school that was loyal to the team. Alabama, Birmingham. <laughs> that, yeah, you can draft out the state of Alabama. Just don't touch the, the UA. And you'll be fine. <laughs> Say don't touch, don't touch the road tide. They, they, they ready to get out of your get get out of soon. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Travis, why are you coming on here like that? Why why you why oh Lord? Why they can oh, call on Tyrone? Hey. 
How y'all doing tonight? What's going on, man? What's going on, man? What's up, LT? LT, I think you muted. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm my bad. I'm, I'm my bad. But I, I just want to know. I just want to come out and say that that I'm sorry, people. Y'all, y'all gonna hate these languages that's going to come out. But that boy played pussy again. <laughs> Two on the play pussy this year. Oh, behind the blue fuck. We don't hear nothing for you for two months. Two whole damn months. And all of a sudden, you posting, you on Snapchat, look at my stats. But what, what damn stats? <laughs> what are you doing that? You know, you know I, I said this, I was, I was talking about this earlier. Um, so he, he, he doesn't use Twitter. He does use Instagram. He's usually on Snapchat. So that's how I kind of sort of keep up with him. So this summer... Um, Calvin Ridley went on a vacation with a couple of guys, and Julio was what I think I don't know somebody's part of the vacation. It was in this big hotel in Vegas, and they were partying and gambling and all of that. And he had it all on Snapchat all off season. He was posting up, y'all know he's a car head, so all the cars he got, he's posting them, all his cars, all them big cars, and all of this. And then out of nowhere, we get to the season, he was posting like you know, practice picture, and he just stopped posting. So you you so you've gone off of all your social media for two months and literally you just popped up and was like, all right, let me just post these stats real quick. That's something Antonio Brown would do. That's really something Antonio Brown would do. Like you're pulling, you're pulling how people people call wide receivers demons. And this is this is just showing you like they're proving y'all proving them right. There's only a certain few of wide receivers that are actually like that don't think that you know like because okay you're a wide receiver you're an athlete you don't probably play quarterback before you don't play running back you know when you a wide receiver you probably don't play by every position but they chose you to put you outside because you was fast and you can catch the ball that's why you don't play DB because you you can catch DBs can't catch but you go to you get into this point. That you don't get on social media and just randomly post your stats and don't say nothing about the team. You say nothing about the team, nothing about what I do for this team, blah blah blah. I could have seen if you would have came out and been like, oh, just on like some some wild stuff and like, hey, I did this for this team. They need me, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, you just out here talking shit, but you're not even out here talking your shit. You out here just posting stats. Like, didn't even put the team on the stats. You put yardage and touchdowns. Like, you don't make sense. It really don't make sense. Nah, TJ. The, the issue that I have, we ain't heard from you for two months, but you said you left for mental health reasons. No update? That your first, your first, first time on social media in two months is you talking about your stats. No update. Hey, guys. I'm glad just checking in with y'all. Mom, still going through some things, you know, this, that, the third, but I'm okay. You know, just give me all the update. You know, you go Atlanta, still a dirty bird for life, whatever, whatever. You ain't say none of that shit. The first thing you do, you post about your motherfucking stats. Like my boy said, send him to Jacksonville, if that's the case. Hey. Send him to Jacksonville. Yeah. Send him to, send him you can't deny, you can't send take away from him. It's a real cute stat line, but instead of posting about your stats, why don't you, you know, come back to fucking practice and, you know, grab some more for us? If, if you're if you're that if you're feeling well enough to be a drama, to be online interacting with people, why can't you interact with your teammates and your coaches and your fans and let us know what the fuck is going on? You know. I I, I want to tell y'all something, man. I, this and this was posted in one of our chats, but somebody posted up a screenshot of their distant cousin that's cousins were really they close. Nah, the man said again he used mental health as a cop out. But the man was like, he didn't want to be around football, this, that, and the third. So why in the hell you was in California at the Giants and Chargers game? Now for that, it's a three-hour difference time zone. So when that game kick off for them, it's 1 o'clock. But it's 4 o'clock for us. We were literally finishing up beating Carolina when that game kicked off. But you in Cali at a, a, at a professional game, but not for your team. You in California. And then, you, but, no, but no, then we then we we see you at certain spots, and and people saying they see you at certain spots, and you still ain't saying nothing about the team, and and I don't take mental health as a joke. 
like you know, that's that's some serious. We all take that real serious because we everybody got their problems. Everybody got they 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 you know they whole thing that goes on with them. But to say, okay, I need a break from football, and then you know, not even give no updates. We done went multiple weeks with Arthur Smith literally saying, I have nothing on Calvin Ridley. Multiple times. With, with it. So there, there has to be either no contact. It has to be no contact for him to say there's nothing new. So that means you didn't communicate with the team. You didn't communicate with nobody on the team. Even if you would have told a player, like, hey, bro, you know, I'm thinking about – like like you said, Hayden Hurst has literally a mental health foundation. You got Dak Prescott, even in, in Dallas, that has a mental health foundation. So why not go to those guys and even be – these are your, your brothers because everybody in the NFL is supposed to be brothers. These are your brothers. Why don't you sit down with them and these guys and have conversations with them? You have shown us that you – like you've not shown us any type of thing that you're getting help. You haven't shown us anything that you're improving. You And then – to come out and just post your stat is just wild. Like that was just the wildest thing you could have done. Oh boy, yeah, yeah. It just it it yeah, it, I think it it's like it's it's the it, 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 it just it, felt like couldn't he approach the whole team? Couldn't approach the whole team. Sorry, I went a, a little bit a little bit slang there. Uh, but if it felt like you couldn't approach the whole team, why not go speak to your captain? I mean, Matt is team. that guy, and I have every every. Wait a minute! Uh, oh my God! You just said something. He would, he would have that. Was really our captain this year? Yep, he was supposed to be one of the captains this year. Yeah, he was. He was. It was five of them. We had five captains. He was one of them. Mm-hmm. Because remember when Arthur Smith first got hired. The one of the first names he put as a guy that he was looking to step up was Calvin Ridley to step into that role. Y'all remember that press conference when he got on Calvin Ridley? Y'all remember that press conference? Anybody remember that press conference when he really like you know went into him? And then the next week he didn't play. And then the next week he played in Miami. Then the next week he said he had mental health issues. Like the man walked out on us with an hour before a game. Yeah. Come on, son. He walked out on us with out before a game. Practice all week. Mm. You part of the game plan. You walked out on us. Come on, dog. So basically, hey, hey, hey. you have a man. You know, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm just want to say this. You have a man on your team that if you go and watch, if, I don't know if you guys have watched Hayden Hurst's story, but mm-hmm. find it. Go go look it up. This man literally played baseball since he was 18. Was in the MLB. Caught the yips basically turned into a pill and, and alcoholic and still is playing in the NFL right now. Almost killed himself. He he admitted it multiple times he felt like killing himself. And he just rejuvenated himself playing football. So <laughs> you got a man on and that's your teammate. Being a teammate for two years now. And you haven't even talked to him about nothing. Really and truly. <laughs> If I was hating hers, I'd fire on his ass. <laughs> but but y'all just said something that was very – Tina, you said something that was very interesting. You said the press conference where he went off on Calvin Ridley. Hmm. Did criticism cause him – like you said, let's look at the build-up to that. Okay, you said the criticism from Cal, on Calvin Ridley. Okay, that was one. Kyle Pitts had two 100 yard games. That's two. Calvin really can't say he wasn't getting the ball thrown to him because in those five games, he had a total of 53 targets. How many catches? Mm-hmm. What was it, about like 36 or something like that? You sure with that? I thought it was like 28. Hold on. I know it was in the 30s. I know it was in the 30s. Hold on, Probably, but maybe Hold on, my, my bad, y'all. I thought yeah. I would have all this stuff right I here. Shout out my boy Vlad in the comments. I do. I just want to say what's up to Vlad in the comments. We come. We we got some plan for y'all, but he. I can't. I can't just. I can't like. I've had the discussion with all of these guys. Like, bro, 
mental health, like I, I take it serious because of my mental health and what my mental being is, even at a young age. Like, you know, even, you know, going through high school, you got mental health stuff. Like, you got stuff like that that goes on with you because you, you know, it, it's not, I wouldn't even say bullying. It's just like, you want to, you know, you see the popular kid and if you, you know, if you're flashed and amazed by that, you be like, oh, I want to be like them. And then, like, when you're not that, and you're the one that, you know, people don't really like or people don't talk to, then you might feel down on yourself. So I take mental health on a serious level because I've seen kids be cut up, arms cut up, legs cut up because they feel like they're not a part of something or they're not a part of being in that group that people like. I've seen people go through dark times. You, everybody know that kid that walk around with the hoodie all day that, that you don't never talk to because he's supposed to be weird. I talk to those kids because they never really had no friends. Like, you got to think from a certain age, they've never really had cool. Like, they've never been the, the guy that everybody want to talk to. You have to talk to those guys. And for you to take this route and say, my mental health is so bad that I couldn't perform on the field is a way of saying, and, and then you don't pop back up and don't say anything about, yeah, I'm getting therapy. I'm getting help. All you said when you left was my mental health is in the right state. I don't want to play no more. You didn't even say, well, I'm going to go get help. If y'all go read the same, he said nothing about going to get help. He said nothing about any of that. He just said, I'm taking some time away. So what was your real process? Like you look, if you look at all these keys, I had to go back and look at it. You go back and look at these keys. He's been throwing little shots. He's been throwing little stuff like, bro, he's not that like he he really has shown you his butt to kiss. Like he he done pulled his hands all the way down to his ankles. They not even on his feet. He ain't got nothing on. He just bent right over and said, "Kiss it." Like that's exactly what he's doing. In other words, in other words he put a he bent for man. We all a part of the kiss my ass club, huh? Yeah, <laughs> literally. Damn it, kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of myself, but yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying, brother. I mean, speaking myself as someone who plays football and and who suffers from mental health issues I don't care if I'm not in a, in a fit state to compete I'm still ripping that sideline and I'm sorry he left us hanging for the London game yeah, sorry, sorry. he didn't have to play if he didn't feel capable but he, he, he should have been there with his brothers mm-hmm. so, so, I know that game's important for y'all like y'all don't especially as a Falcons fan in London because we don't get games in London like that so to be in London, and then you don't even get to see the the star. You're supposed to be wide receiver one because he said he can't make it. It's just crazy. Mm-hmm. So mm. from what all this sounds like to me is, he thought he had the Julio treatment and found out real quick that that shit wasn't gonna ride. Mm-hmm. And then, and one of our guys I was just on the call with that discussed it, he was talking about Dan Quinn as a coach. He was like, Dan Quinn wasn't as bad as people made it seem like he was. Uh, it was like, he was just like, a lot of people didn't like him because he was loyal to Matt Ryan to a fault. And I was like, no. That man, I, 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 the reason why he going to always get flack from me because he let the inmates run the asylum. And that's exactly what Ridley was thinking. He think once he got past his rookie contract, he won't be in a position where he could be on the sideline at practice, not practicing. You know, you, you, you like just like how it was. You on the injury report, but you ain't even injured. You you ride on you ride on the side by side, or on a golf cart throughout throughout the course of practice. You're not doing nothing, and he expect the same thing. But when then Arthur Smith got here, he let everybody know, no, everybody practice accountability. Mm-hmm. I, I put it like this. I told like what I what I tell you. Mm-hmm. I told I was talking to Mike. I told Mike. I said, when you've been given the world since you were the age of eighteen, it's kind of hard. It's because mind you, he was a, he was in the Alabama since the age, and he was one of the top rated wide receivers in the country, and he went to Alabama. And you know how them Alabama wide receivers get treated. If you watch, if you know college football, you know how them Alabama wide receivers get treated. You know how that program is ran. You are a star. When you're a star at Alabama, you are the star. 
and he has been a star for at least since he was the age of 18, where he had a whole, you know, like you a five-star recruit, you in high school a five-star recruit. You know, I've I've seen these guys. I, I went to I went if you were a Clemson fan, I went to school with Zaire Cooper. Zaire Cooper was a senior the year I was my my freshman year. He was my my senior quarterback. Zaire Cooper was baby, bro. I watched that man get baby. But he would miss he he wouldn't come to practice 30 minutes late. And coach wouldn't even say nothing. Like it's stuff like that. Like when you're the star and everybody knows you're a star. You're gonna get that treatment now. And when it's summer, like like this is the thing that I say. Like when it's summertime, if you don't show up, you get in trouble. You get in trouble. It's the same thing with Calvin. You don't show up the OTA. It's the same thing with OTA. You don't show the OTAs. You don't get paid. It's the same mm-hmm. stuff like that. But when you you can take a hit like that when you making five million dollars. Okay, you take a hundred thousand dollars out of my check. That's cool. I still got a three million left, four million left. Like. It's stuff like that where you don't – if you're not held accountable with Arthur Smith did when he came in, we're starting to hold these guys accountable, and that made them mad. Dan Quinn didn't hold these guys accountable. He was making – you could tell as soon as – how do you get – how does a new coach get hired and you automatically want to leave the team? Think about uh, it like let me, that. Let me, let me say this. How freaking hard is it to be considerate? How hard is it to be goddamn considerate? Guys, I'm okay. I call, look, I, I hit up, look, I hit up everybody. I, I tell people all the time, look, if I'm going to someone's house, if they came to my house to see me, I, I always say these two things. Call me when you get home. I'll call you when I get home. Just being considerate of the fact that they may be worried. They want to see me, you know, get home on time properly. Okay? How freaking hard is it to just show people that care about you, even if it's your fans? If they haven't heard, if people haven't heard from me on social media, and I know people's like, man, these ain't your real friends. And all. Look, there's people out here that really do care, care for you, care about your well-being, who are your followers. And like I said, these people are genuine. How freaking... How hard is it to just be considerate? And that's what it, this was. This is what it all comes down to. All right, all these all these silly clown ass comments talking about he don't owe you. Look, I, he don't owe you anything. No, he doesn't owe you anything. I don't. I don't owe anybody anything anyway. You know, but consideration. Just be considerate. That's it. It don't cost us. That's free ninety nine. It's free. It's free just to be considerate. You know what's so crazy about this whole situation? The fact that Arthur Smith or nobody has an update on Calvin Ridley. You know exactly that sounds like when uh, Julio Jones avoided contact with uh, Arthur Smith, Arthur Blank, and Terry Fontenot. When he wanted to get traded, avoided their phone calls and everything is is basically the same thing. He, and people forget he didn't just do this one time. He did it twice. He did it before the Jets game, and then he did it again versus Carolina. When he did it versus Carolina, I already knew what the deal was. But some people were in denial. I already knew he didn't want to be here. That Jets game, that 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 Jets goal, well, the Jets game, the Carolina game. Was when we should have known. Everybody should have known it was something. When he put that tweet out in the middle of the game, mind you, we was losing. In the fourth quarter, while we're in losing. The fourth quarter, while we losing, and you go out here and you tweet, "Yeah, bro, I, I, I just can't do it no more." Why did you? What was that? Where did that even come from? First but off, see, the thing about it, it just can't. And Julio did this too. What? Let's let's remember this. Julio in twenty was a twenty seventeen. Julio got that huge contract. Julio didn't show up to practice all summer camp because he won another million dollars. Y'all remember? It was 2019, yeah. Yeah, it was 2019. He did it twice. Twenty, it Yeah, twice. 2019, he got the huge contract. That was after Michael Thomas got paid. Yeah. Yeah, because we redid his contract two years later after we paid him because he wanted more money. Let's think about that. We literally – we have – and Calvin thought, okay, they treated Julio so good, they're going to have to treat me like Julio because I'm the new number one. I'm the new wide receiver number one. 
I'm that guy. You walking around with a big chest, and then your coach, your coach come up to you and say, nah, bro, you ain't built like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I ain't going to treat you like that. That's a whole different regime. You got a new GM, got a new, you know, a new coach, got new other coach. All your whole coaching staff got fired. Your whole front office got fired. We got a whole new team in here. You are not going to be treated like how Rubio was treated. And imagine how that made you feel when you saw your best friend come in here. Well, your best friend when you got here, your Alabama alumni brother, you saw him at the same point, at the same team, get treated like a superstar. And then your next your year when you wide receiver one, you don't get treated like that. You get put in the you basically, and then you got your coach in a press conference telling you how bad you are. And you know what's so crazy too? Even though Julio pulled what he pulled, whenever he was injured, at least he was on the sidelines giving game and coaching the wide receivers. Like, Calvin, really, you couldn't – Exactly. Yeah, you yeah. had mental health issues. You couldn't be out there on the sideline coaching these receivers up, giving them the game that Julio gave them because Julio learned the game from uh, Tony Gonzalez and Roddy White. Really, mm -hmm. you one of the top five route runners in the game. You see what, what, what kind of talent we got in this wide receiver room. You couldn't give them the game. You couldn't at least support your team on the sidelines. Yeah, I love Kyle mean, Pitts out there to figure it out by himself. Right. To figure it out. Like, that's that's the thing that, like. At least Julio was on the sidelines when he was hurt. Yeah. Like, and <laughs> and think about who was like. We appreciate – I appreciate who deal for his time here. I, I don't like how he left, but while he was here, I appreciate him. I appreciate the years you gave us, these big games, these big yards, all of that stuff. I, I forever love that man for what he did in Atlanta. How you left us was a fuck you. That's what it really felt like. But when I think back on your career in Atlanta, I would love you. You can't keep doing this, bro. You, you can't think – you're not him. You haven't been here long enough to think, oh, I'm going to pull a Julio. You're not built – first off, you're not built like that. You're not even at the mm -hmm. same type of level to be like, oh, yeah, I can just do whatever Julio does because I don't want to be – Not even Roddy White. You're not – exactly. You're not a Falcons legend at the wide receiver yet. You're nowhere near that. You got – we have legends. If you go back and look at who we've had at wide receiver these last couple – these, we'll go from the 90s on. We've had nothing but great talent at wide receiver. And you are not in that class yet. Mm -hmm. You're not in that class yet to do something like this. You're just not. Roddy White stayed here his whole career. And, and I, somebody said something about Gronk and Tom Brady. Gronk had a story where he was getting traded to Detroit and he retired on the spot because he didn't want to go nowhere else. You are, you're not going – You're but even to, to, to Calvin's spot – you're not built like that. You're not an Atlanta legend yet. We love you as a player, but you're not an Atlanta legend. You're not built like you're not built like Terrence Mathis. You're not built like Julio. You're not built like Roddy White. You're not built like oh, I can't even think of half that '90s team that was the Super Bowl. You're not built like those guys. You're not those wide. Re you're not that wide receiver that we know and yeah. love by name. You're not that guy. Andre yet. Bad Moon Rising. The all of them, bro. You're not those guys. You're not into that group of categories yet. You had a great season last year. Cool. You you're, you're, you were getting to the point of, okay, we going we got Calvin Ridley. You was we knew the transition was gonna happen. We just did no win, and that was how it was gonna go. It was the same thing with Roddy when we got Julio. I mean, we me, knew the transition was gonna happen. Let me ask everybody this. Let me ask everybody this. I'm going to start with uh, William. Um, do you guys do you guys believe that yeah, the Falcons it. and me yeah, uh, uh, do you think do you think that the Falcons kind of prematurely gave him the keys to the to the team and you know he kind of ran with that and kind of filled his head. Do you think that? I blame my social media team. I think there team. was that gap of a year where we had no Julio, but we had to have a wide receiver one because we didn't have Pitts yet. We didn't have Patterson at that time. So we needed that big threat. Whether or not we can uh, give him the keys to the team, I, I, I'm not so sure. But, I mean, what I, what I wanted to say to you all, and, I mean, if you, if you feel a different kind of way about this, then let me know. But the Carolina one, I almost expected them to do that. 
the Jets game is what pissed me off because yeah, he's shitting on the team. You could also say he's shitting on the league because it's not a right to go to London. It's an honour and a privilege, and he should have right. uh, have at least travelled, if not played. It's not put on for for a for a piss take, for want of a better word. They mm-hmm. it's an honour to go and play for the international fans, and he's not seen it as such. Yeah, I I I would put it like this. I blame my I and I, I love our social media team, but I blame my social media team on that. Let's let's go look at you go look at when we're getting into the, the, the preseason and, and you know when we traded Julio. They who they start pumping. They started pumping Calvin out there. As soon as we traded Julio, they started pumping Calvin. Calvin posted he was wide receiver one. They started retweeting all of that stuff. All all the Calvin, everything Calvin was posting was getting retweeted, all of this stuff. You were putting a lot of pressure on that man. And you got when he got killed. I keep going back to that Arthur Smith press conference. When he got killed by the coach. That killed his confidence. Cause he he thought he was the man on the war. He was the top man. I ain't gonna lie, he be getting hyped since 2019. Like I knew last season when he was running away from contact. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I gotta stop. That's some like, like you didn't realize what you just said. That's yeah. some punk shit. I, I yeah. apologize. Yeah. If you if you if your ass been hyped all season, <laughs> and then somebody <laughs> take one bad thing about you, you go crying yeah, in the corner. <laughs> Boy, hurt his feelings hurt. Mike. You know, he he's 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 he, 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 he said he was in the corner, like, You got it bad. Oh, you say you got it saw. <laughs> uh, 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 he 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 he, he couldn't t- like, Look, you you like I said, you get hyped up, and then that your world crashed down on you when your coach say you having to be you, you not doing what you're supposed to be doing, and he just got yeah. He, you know how you know there's a lot of sensitive people out in this world, and he just sensitive. Like you, he just got real sensitive about it. And like you, it's football. That's the one thing I say. It is football. You cannot be sensitive when you play football because your coach will cuss you out. I done had coaches cuss me out since I was in little league, and I ain't quit football. It's it's just how it goes. Like, bro, you gonna get you gonna get cussed out. You gonna get told about yourself because you if you especially if you think you bigger. Than, than what you are, and you really ain't that guy, and they, they go home with you. Fans are going to do it to you. Yeah, Fans are going to do it to you. The hell with the coaches, the fans are going to give it to you. They're going to say during the games, oh, you suck, you suck, you 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 missed the catch, or whatever the hell. They're going to give it to you. If, you. if if you're sensitive in this game in any way, shape, or form, then you shouldn't be playing football so if he's if he's having these mental issues because of yeah you know criticism go ahead William go ahead no I was just gonna say I mean he just seems like a very sensitive soul in every possible way um I mean he's you know you're going to be routinely hit by 250 280 pound men but he does not like to be hit so I mean it's not just on Mm -hmm. mentally I think he's just he's not prepared for the pressure that being a number one receiver brings on you. The doubles and all we like some type of an outside linebacker cheating in and Calvin's not built to deal with, with guys that size and he, even if he was, he's he's too tentative. He he doesn't like to initiate contact at all. Hey, man, I don't know if I'm speaking for everybody. I'm just speaking for myself. I, I hope after the way this season and this past off season went that as far as wide receivers, we looking at LSU, Ohio State, Georgia, and Florida because we got these last two road tie receivers. You got somebody lying and stealing money from us and the other one faking illnesses out here because he don't want to be held accountable, bro. Ooh, I will never tell you. You know what I said? I said – it's funny. I said Arthur Blank. I said Arthur Blank or whoever and Terry Fontenot, Arthur Smith. They, they we will never touch an Alabama receiver again. I hope. I hope we don't. I don't think we'll ever touch an Alabama wide receiver again. I think. I think it's at a point now where we have seen two of them just 
basically shit on the franchise in the same year, bro. Yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't dare even go scout at Alabama. I, I, all them guys they get out and they all built the same. I don't think anybody realizes Alabama just literally puts out the same person every other year. I want every people. I want people to go watch Jalen Waddle, go watch Devontae Smith, and then go watch Calvin Ridley. I was saying something. I said something at the beginning of this season, and I think people really, it flew over people's heads. I said, go look at those Alabama receivers, and go look at Calvin Ridley's wide receiver class. All of those, those are the OGs. All of those guys that came out that year with Calvin Ridley at Alabama, those are the OGs. Jalen Waddle, Devon, all of those guys are just the recreations of them, literally and truly. They're literally recreations of those guys. Alabama had a, had Julio Jones, Amari Cooper. I can't. It was, they had a whole bunch of big receivers before they had little receivers. Mm-hmm. They literally just make carbon copies and they throw them in the league. All of their receivers come out with the same type of everything. It it, it it it's so crazy. I think people don't notice that they make carbon copies. Next year, look, running backs. All they running backs big. All they running backs fast. All they running backs like look. Derrick Henry was right. the biggest one. But look, Mark Henry was big when he was in college. Mark um, Henry. All, Don't, you Mark Don't you say nothing. Don't you say nothing. I meant Mark Henry. Y'all Somebody's know what I mean. gonna get the head <laughs> kick. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Ingram, like, all these, I said, all these, don't you say nothing. The Hall look, of Pain. He ain't never been in the. That's this is the kind of made me laugh because he ain't never been to Oklahoma drill, bro. He 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 ain't gotten hit before. Wow. He, he ain't never been to Oklahoma drill. But I tell you, when he got hit, when he got hit in that Miami game, he felt it. Oh yeah, he got killed that game. You know them guys that stand in the back. The coach got a call out when it's Oklahoma time. That's that was Calvin Ridley. He was the one standing behind the lineman, so he couldn't get called out. <laughs> I, I tell you what, though, my my only thing is I Thank hope you. we can trade him as fast as possible to to get a first round pick. Because remember when Julio came out publicly. On, on undisputed, that basically shot our chances down to getting the first round pick. The highest we could get is a second. So I hope that him, you know what I'm saying, faking to get out. I hope that news don't get out before we trade him. No, I mean, out, let, me, let, me, let me explain something to you, ATM. It ain't about Julio getting the first round pick because, quite frankly, at his age, he really, really wasn't worthy of a first round pick. And the only reason why we really didn't get the first is because we traded away his contract. Like they literally took his contract. I mean, if you give me, a, I mean, you give me a second, and you take on that badass contract, and I ain't got to pay him, and I ain't got to like pay his salary and whatnot. By all means, I will take that second. Oh no, I'm I'm happy with it. I'm just saying, I hope the truth, like I hope him wanting out, doesn't come out before we trade him. That a that a hurt is uh, but what we can get I'm in pretty, return. I'm pretty it. sure. I'm pretty sure it will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think it I think you can't really think I I hope we don't you know I hope they don't take trade value away, you know, if it if it comes out he was lying about it or not. But right. it, it I don't think it will because he's so young. He's still young, bro. He like he's like 26, 27. He's not old, he's still fast, he's still fit, he still can move. Somebody at 28. He's 20. Oh yeah, he came out of college old. Yeah, but he he'll get somebody will, somebody will give him a first. He he'll, he'll get a first. somebody will give you a first for him. Somebody gonna want Calvin Ridley. It's gonna be a team. I feel like it's gonna be like it's the Eagles one. got three first round picks. They don't. I don't think they, 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 they got the one. They got the one. I'm telling you, it's gonna be a team that wants like a wide receiver. Like they want like a wide receiver to like slot guy. It's gonna be Trade a team to like Detroit. That. Jesus, that'd be horrible. I feel bad to send him to the choice. <laughs> oh my god. Trade him to Detroit. I'm gonna have Jerry Goff throwing him the ball. He's gonna be mad. <laughs> you heard you, you heard what K Styles said about who he will Fuck it. Trade him to Jacksonville. Exactly. Trade him to the Jets. We were speaking a lot. Shoot. Uh, the, Shoot. Hey, look, hey, look. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Go ahead. I don't let him go. go ahead. Go ahead, well, William. Yeah, in terms of uh, what we're saying about the diva thing earlier, he almost acts like he's got a sense of entitlement. Like the DB will put mm-hmm. hands on him within the first five yards, 
and he'll, he'll instantly look at Matt or he'll look at the ref. I'm like, what, did they not play those rules at Bama? First five yards, yes, he can put his hands on you, but guess what? You can put your hands on him too. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I've noticed that he's been doing that a lot. I, I noticed that he did do, did that a lot. Um, if you just touch him the wrong way, he'll turn at the ref and <laughs> like he he's not like big he, enough. He's not big enough, bro. He's just not. He's I, big I enough. That's, that's not he's true not at all. That's not, that's not true at all. That's not true at all. Uh, I've seen guys smaller in the camera really. He's, well, he's wait. not. Big. I put like but, he's not. Big he ain't got, got it. I'll put it like that. He, he ain't got it right here. He, mm -hmm. he ain't got it right there. Don't have it mm -hmm. And I forgot about Matt Ryan basically leaking out his hand during that Panthers game. That would make it even worse. This man out here bleeding, giving everything he got, and you on it. I mean, head was bloodshot. I, I remember that, his whole I Panthers forgot game. all about that, bro. Yeah, that that's the game funny. he got set <laughs> Yeah, so let's get to uh, let's let's ahead. get to some questions. Um, everybody, it's gonna um, we're gonna wind it down real shortly, but we're gonna get into some Q and A. Um, so if you guys got any question that you feel like want to talk about as far as like the draft, free agency, or just anything that you you know yeah, concerned see, about throughout uh, the NFL. Uh, NFL. <laughs> I seen Alex make a, a point there, Alex Edwards. He said, "Well, he is big enough." I mean, compare. Uh, Ridley to a, uh, I don't know, a Jalen Waddle. Mm -hmm. Now, Ridley would be about three inches taller, maybe 20 pounds heavier. But have you ever seen mm -hmm. Jalen Waddle uh, shirk from mm -hmm. contact going across the middle for being a smaller receiver? Nope. Not once. Uh. I got a question for y'all. Um, is it. Is it that we drafted the wrong wide receiver from Alabama, or is it all Alabama wide receivers that are they could act like this? We shouldn't have never drafted really in the first place. We needed defense that year, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You right. You see that face right there, like. Or you could have traded back. Yeah, I would. But I mean, it, I mean, if you think about it, it really wouldn't matter because we still had Thomas Dimitrov drafting. So, uh, uh, all that—that's uh, uh, I want to get into what could have should. At the end of the day, we have them, right. and you know, it, we need to make do for what it is. All right, decisions can be, you know. Looking back on things, that that is pointless. At the end of the day, mm. we have Calvin Ridley. What can we do to improve this team with or without him? You know, I, I think that should be the focus. And um, uh, all right. Let let me. I I, I got I got a. I see a question here. What you got, Horace Miller? Do we do we do we build on the offensive line of defense? Um, I think both. Um, both. I, I don't think there's a question. Yeah. <laughs> you have you have to do you have to do both. Uh, I I know a lot of people. One one thing we got to understand um, about both the offensive line and defensive line is that you need chemistry. Okay, that's first and foremost. The players around each other have to have chemistry. They have to understand, all right, if I do this, I know Grady is strong and he's going to push through the guy. So if I push through the guy, I'm going to have an easy path. So, like, you got to understand how each player plays together and how each player plays together. That's why you saw um, today, uh, I forget what day it was. It might have been the day, but what Dean P said, he has to teach guys how to be a pass rusher how teach them how to pass the rusher not get guys in who can rush the passer teach guys how to rush pass because you're dealing with guys with instincts things they've been taught in college you're trying to you know pretty much you know erase you know the matrix where you're trying to erase 
everything in his memory, all that type of stuff. You're trying to you're trying to develop new habits. So this is what the Falcons team is going through. You're trying to develop new habits with guys like Jalen. You're trying to you know develop new habits with Hennessy and uh, uh, Ottawa. Or oh, um, I, I don't know how to say his damn name. You, you know, I just say Adi. Um, a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys, they've been taught certain ways. But when they get in the NFL, you have to pretty much start over. Um, so at the end of the day, you need guys who are from not only familiar with the scheme, but you want guys to develop well together. So that's the reason why I, I, I feel as though that I don't think Dion is going anywhere. I don't think Walker is going away anywhere four year he really just got into a scheme that he's playing like a pro bowl and he wants to be here because if he goes to another team guess what he's gonna have to learn that scheme the verbiage and all that type of stuff so you, you're gonna have to develop chemistry so replacing a mayfield replacing a Kyle, uh, a caleb mcgarry that's not gonna solve you're gonna be right back in the same place as before Trying to get a guy who can play next to this guy, learn this guy, so it's repetitive. Go ahead, Wade. In terms of uh, replacing McGarry, uh, how do you guys feel about maybe going mid round and taking Alec Lindstrom out of Boston College? I mean, we do have his brother, um, and you don't get Mm -hmm. much more chemistry than playing beside your brother. So, I mean, that could be a sound pick. I also really like Daniel Fatalele out of uh, Minnesota. I think he's really, really good. Um, so, I mean, Matthews is, is passable, but, I mean, uh-huh. you bring in somebody with the size of a, a fat alele, you could almost move uh, Matthews across to right tackle, have Hennessy at centre, and then have the Lindstrom brothers play in the two guard positions, maybe. Um, I mean, uh-huh. it's all conjecture at this point, but I, I reckon that sounds pretty, pretty solid to me. I like it. Mm. I, I, I like it. Um... At some point, you're going to have to look for a tackle um, anyway uh, because we don't know what Gano, if he's going to be back, if he's going to be the same player. So you're going to have to draft a tackle regardless at some point. So, like, I'm not against it at all. Um, we need depth on the offensive line and <laughs> defensive line. So Lindstrom, I think that'll yeah. be a natural – uh, because obviously they know each other and they know their strengths and weaknesses being brothers. And, you know, again, that chemistry, you know, your brother, I'm playing with my brother in the backyard, playing football, basketball. I know his tendency. So, you know, you know, your brother better than anybody. So I think that's something I would look into. Um, you actually saw that with new England, mm-hmm. with the, uh, um, the, the, uh, McCordy, uh, McCordy, McCordy. 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 Those guys, safety so and cornerback. I, 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 I like that. I got, I got a hot take for y'all. I got a, got a real hot take. Um, when we was talking about D line and O line, here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> y'all know I play center. Y'all know I love my heavy set boys up front protecting the quarterback. You, y'all know, y'all know I'm gonna say something and y'all gonna, you gonna call me crazy. But that D line is a different monster compared to that O line. Um, like Dean P said, you got to teach guys D line. O line, you have learned the same kick step, drop step, pull, twist, combine, all of that stuff since you was in Little League. Now, all you've had to do since in Little League was sharpen your tools. That's all. It, that's all. O line has been is sharpening tools every every time you go up. They gonna teach you a little bit, another little. They going It's not a lot more techniques you can push in online, because mm-hmm. they they made online literally obsolete. You can't even guard nobody the wrong way, or you gonna get a flag. It's it's so stupid, but we ain't gonna get into that. Like it's, I have such a I have such a hatred to uh, refs that call flags on line on centers that move. I hate them so much because they just it's such a dumb call. You can't sit like that for 10 minutes because you're getting 12 different snaps and think you ain't going to move the ball once. But we're not going to get into all of that. <laughs> it's so stupid, bro. But that old, that D-line, you got so many responsibilities. Same thing with O-line, but you got so many different more responsibilities on D-line. 
How y'all think Marlon Davidson got that pick six? It was just him reading. It was literally just him reading. Like that D line, you got to learn screenplay. You got to learn when the O line pulling that you can't feel. If you feel the gap, you got to make sure you feel the gap the right way. Because if you get blown off your feet, you're going to be looking down. It's stuff mm-hmm. like that. You got to learn how to squeeze. You got to learn how to move this way. If it's a screenplay, you know it's a screenplay. You're supposed to sit. Because you know the whole line that left you hanging and you standing there like what you supposed to do when you rushing the quarterback and it's a screen. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of little intricate stuff. People think D line is just running up the field and tackling somebody. That's not what D line is. D line is you re- is reading your keys. If you, I want some. I wish they had an angle of a D lineman's eyes for the whole play for a whole play. Because I promise you, he's he, they got you got three different keys at O line at D line. You got weights. You got a lot of keys. You got to read in a matter of five seconds, especially if it's a play action. Because you you like if in a play action play as a D lineman, you rushing up field thinking this you trying to fill a gap, and then you got to go into your pass rush. It don't matter what you play D in or D or D tackle. It's a lot of interesting keys. Like so, say it's an inside zone play action. Okay, I'm thinking I'm gonna you know I got okay I felt my hole right. And the, you, because the lineman, he done kick step, and you like, bro, what you doing? It's supposed to be a run play. And then now you sitting there confused, and he got his hands on you. It's stuff like that you have to realize and watch. Like, if you watch, I want people to go watch one on ones. Like, if y'all go watch the Senior Bowl, mm-hmm. you go watch the All American game. Go watch those one, online one on ones. Don't even. Do not – and don't go watch the running back and linebacker, all, all the little fancy – you know, all the little skinny guys that can do all the special moves. Watch them big heavy set boys go one-on-one with each other because that is a dog fight every time. And if you get blown up, you're going to get – if you say – don't even get pan, – don't get pancake because I promise Ooh. you, you know, 20 people standing there. Oh, boy, you – your ass get pancake, boy. You about, you, you about to hear about that right now. Bro, you – <laughs> Boy, you, you going to hear that. We used to do pass pro. Don't get don't get blown up on pass pro. Don't, if you don't, you don't get five seconds, and you don't say don't don't let you get held. Don't hold nobody, bro. And that's why I say it's hard. It's a, it's hard to be an old lineman, but it's a lot more learning to be a D lineman. It's mm-hmm. real hard to be an old lineman because the rules book, yeah, the rule book. And if you ever need some lessons into the intricacies of defensive line, watch Adam Donald work. I mean that guy is power personified and yet his his hand work, his footwork is mm-hmm. just impeccable. Yeah. He's got great movement. Um I think watching an Aaron Donald uh, a TJ Watt, uh, going back a few years a DeMarcus Ware, that's where you yeah. really see the intricacies of the defensive line play. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. So anybody else got any more questions before we close? Um no. Nah. I saw I saw one. Um, where was it? I just saw this one. I can't. Even, I don't know where it went. Um, it's, it's above this. Oh, well, the Calais Candle question. I think somebody asked something about the draft. I, I think he was asking like like the wide receiver. We're not gonna take a wide receiver round one. I don't think. Uh, uh, don't, uh, don't, we don't know that. We don't know that. I, I, said, I don't think. Look, Mike, I, said, I don't think. Nah, 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 we possibly can't, but if he isn't that there, there's no back. way we Come can. There's no, we don't know that. That's 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 what I'm saying. We don't know. We could very, they could very well work things out. We have no idea. All right, we're giving our personal opinions on things. So this is what we do. We cover all bases around here. We cover all bases. This is about getting things the proper way. Because if we can sit, if, if we sit up here and say, all right. There's definitely no way we're getting wide receiver. And then here we go. They trade down. They pick up a few picks and then, you know, use those picks to come back into the draft. It's like we've seen this before in the NFL. We've seen this. We've seen um, New England do it. We did it with Caleb McGarry. 
I what? nobody saw that. Nobody saw us trading back into the first round and getting Caleb McGarry. So those are the reason why I say that. So don't don't. I just like to give everybody every aspect, not just one. Yeah, I, I, I get what you say. I say he gone. <laughs> <laughs> I, say he too. I say he gone too, but we gonna cover all bases so the fans <laughs> so everybody know what to expect. I look, I did not see us drafting Caleb Gary. I sure as hell didn't see us drafting AJ AJ Terrell with uh what the 16, 17 pick, sixteen pick. Yeah, I, 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 I ain't see the McGarry like you traded back. I didn't think I didn't get, I didn't expect us to go McGarry or with Lindstrom that year. I didn't even first off I, I was yeah, really the the grass. Grass. I was like you drafted oh Lyman what a, whoa 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 I was confused. <laughs> he, he, hey I'm about to say Demetri I tried to try to address the offensive line and it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I, and my, like, ATM, if you asking who would I like to see, um, I would, mm-hmm. I, I got, I only had two people I really, really like. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. I know Vlad, Vlad loves DeMarvin Lil, but I really like Ajabu. Um, uh, let, let me, let me ask this. Let me interrupt because I, I want to, um, we're going to get on the two hours, but we're going to, we're going to get everybody's, uh, the draft. All right. We're going to say NFL draft. Who and what are uh, what are you doing um in the first round? Um uh William, um what's we're gonna start with you, ATM and then uh TJ. Okay. First round. What are you doing? It's an interest interesting question, but for me, coming up at ten, mm, is Jordan Davis available? If he is, I mean that's a three hundred and fifty pound rock. <laughs> you could easily yeah. kick uh, Grady out to end. But if he's not available, I would I'd be perfectly happy with a, with a, a David Ajabo or a Nicobe Dean. Keep him in Georgia because he's a baller. Uh, but I'm definitely going defense, pass rush, uh, for first round. How about you guys? Uh, me. We just saw the Saints beat the Bucks nine to zero with Taysom Hill at quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> Without a Michael Thomas, them boys beat the Bucks nine to zero with Taysom Hill. So, in the first round, I'm going. If Jordan Davis is available, I am snagging him. If not, Devontae <laughs> Wyatt or or like TJ said in the job over. I want Jordan Davis right there by Grady Jarrett. We gotta beef up that defensive line. We got to address the trench. Hmm. I love yeah. Um, y'all know I love Jordan Davis. Like, that's my brother. Um, I <laughs> that, like, that's, my, that's my dog, bro. I didn't look. Look, if Jordan Davis is sitting there, with this saying that because you, 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 you buy three hundred fifty pounds yourself. You love me. Right, whoa, 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 I got I'm like, I was like a little dude. I got three I'm like the dude from uh Willie Walker, the little blueberry dude. That's what I'm gonna look like a little melody nose there suggesting we go uh George Karloftis out of uh, Purdue. He would be an yeah, the edge. Oh Karloftis yeah. is a very good like, all there's about like him, bro. I really want. There's Jordan Davis, there's George Karloftis, and there's a Jabo. I can I understand somebody said uh, somebody said Nicobe Dean because mm-hmm. he's you know he's in Georgia. Those three, I like a Jabo. I like a Jabo because I've watched. The, I like. I watched Michigan all year. Y'all know I'm a Georgia fan, but I watched Michigan all year. That man's a special beast of the animal. Uh, like he, I, I can imagine a Jabo and and um, oh my god, Ogan Deji on the edge and just dominating like all game. I can just imagine that in my head. Then you go, you know, we can go with, we can go with Jordan Davis. I love Jordan Davis. Like that boy is just, just special to me. <laughs> I can't even explain why I love Jordan. Somebody came up to me and asked me, "Would you take Jordan Davis because of his conditioning?" I said, "I don't care about conditioning when he's three fifty pounds and he holds the line like a brick." Right. That that you got. Two, mm-hmm. He ain't playing but two snaps. Like I think people don't understand. 
he's not a pass rusher. He can pass rush, but he's not a pass rusher. He is he's a run stuffing the nose. Was Vince Wolford a pass rusher? No, but did Vince Wolford get sacked? Yes, because he was just he was just that dominant, and that's the thing I see in Jordan he's, Davis. He's, and then right, yeah. He's, and we run a 3 4, so you're going to need a nose tackle. You have him and Anthony Rush. And then you got Carl Loftus. Carl Loftus is just the, the Euro, uh, he, he is the European Jesus of the NFL. Um, that, that, <laughs> that boy, boy going to be great. I mean, like, like I, think, I watched this film because I, I was, I, somebody put his name out in a, in a draft, in like a, a, a mock draft. And I was like, I'm going to go watch this film. It's crazy what you see him do, like pursuit wise. Like even if the play's not to his side, he can still get the tackle. Like that's the same thing with a job. Like it does not matter what side you run to, you're gonna get hit by them. Like they're gonna find a way to touch you. And that's the scary part about them. Like they like the contact. And that's why I think Carl Loft is is he's gonna be something. If we if he's at 10, the thing about that is like your top. 10 right now is so jumbled because you don't know who's taking a quarterback in the top 10. Mm. You just don't know yet because somebody's going to take one. Somebody's going to take a quarterback top 10. I don't, I can't see nobody not taking a quarterback top 10. Carolina. Yeah. Man, they probably going to take Matt Corral if he's not. I don't, still haven't heard about his injury. You know, so it's, it's going to be, a, I think this year is going to be like, I mean, it's going to be fun, man. I think it's going to be. Who you want, TJ? You, you know what I'm saying? 15 people. I got who do you want? <laughs> who I want? I, when, we, when it comes to draft night, and I tell you I was right, I, it's three people. It's three people. Those are the only three I want. I want job I want Jordan Davis or I want Carl Lopez. That was the only two I really want. <laughs> but, but I tell you what, TJ, if they let Aiden Hutchinson fall because of one bad game like like um they did with A.J. Terrell, i take him too. If Aiden Hutchinson drops to, to 10, yeah. I would too. Because they would, already would, slander him, calling him overrated. Screaming, bro. Don't don't even give me that idea. Please don't give me that idea. I mean, they calling him overrated right now because of that game versus I, Georgia. I follow Georgia Twitter. I know. I, I follow Georgia Twitter. I know what we was doing. We was trolling him. I, I'm, I tell you, he dropped the 10. I'm going to scream my head off. Promise so you. So who y'all want, K-Styles and Mike? Who, who, who y'all want in the first round, man? I'm torn with this one because me personally, knowing the situation that we in, I would trade back. Mm. But the like I said, because for some reason, I like like if you're talking about Jordan Davis, I kind of have a feeling Jordan Davis is going to drop in this draft. I have a feeling that he might drop. He might not drop too far down, but it's going to be out of that top 10. So, if that, that's the case, yeah, Jordan Davis. I don't really have a – I don't really – like I said, I like, I like a Jobo too, but there's another, there's another guy that I'm keeping my eye on that is very, very interesting to me. Uh, what's so his name? Devin Lloyd. Oh yeah, out of Utah. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. That boy big too. <laughs> that boy big too. Yeah. So, so you can also look at secondary as well. I mean, look at Sauce Gardner out of Cincy. Mm. I mean, there's some yeah. great corners as well. It's a pretty deep, mm. uh, pretty deep draft all around. Uh, yeah. The QB position isn't massively deep. But apart from that, I mean, most of the other positions are stacked. Right. I was going to ask y'all about uh, Sauce Gardner after uh, Mike tells us who he uh, who he wants in the first round. Um, mm-hmm. Like K-Styles, um, I'm trading back. Um, I'm really going in this draft. You can um, – you can get multiple edge guys mm-hmm. uh, in Israel. So I, you're not going to be able to replace a Jordan Davis in Israel. You're just not going to get a guy 350 with that athleticism. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. No title. Like we got, we, I, I want people to get in the habit of mm-hmm. looking at 
what they are and not what they could possibly be. Mm -hmm. He's an athletic. He's well, he's a nose tackle. Okay, you gotta understand with Jordan David. He's a nose tackle, but he's one of the most athletically gifted nose tackles there's ever been. It reminds me of a Vince Wilford. He was yeah. massive, mm -hmm. but he was a massive. Like he, he's one of those guys that was big, but they was athletically gifted. Out Kevin Williams, another guy. Those Williams boys in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You know they big. But they were athletic, so I can't. If you want to get the most out of this defense, I think you have to get a guy like Jordan Davis that's going to protect the linebackers, keep mm -hmm. people clean, keep Boye clean, keep Walker clean, and let Grady Jarrett just do what he does back and that's get in the backfield and 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 get after the passion. That's what yeah. you need. You need a guy that's going to be an asset and, and going to. You know, and Mucho said as well another example that perfectly exemplifies what you've just said there. Mm -hmm. uh, Kalia Campbell, that is a giant mm -hmm. human being, but he can move Ooh, that. He I can move like that bulk. Isn't he a free agent at, uh, in the offseason? Who? Apart from who? Oh, um, Calais Campbell. And our, he is. Uh, we could do worse than bringing him in, to be honest. I think he's still got a little bit left in the tank. I don't think he's done yeah, just yet. I think so. I think, I think so. He's, just, he's getting older, but I think people are taking his age for granted. I mean, they do a lot mm -hmm. to a lot of players. Like these guys get older, and they're like, "Oh, they ain't got nothing left." Right. And mm -hmm. Let's go. Let's go look at Vic Beasley, sixteen sack. Yeah, I know we we ain't go. We we people don't like Vic, but let's go look at who we saw. I'd rather have him than than Kung Fu Panda and and Steven <laughs> 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 Oh. No! oh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody need to make that a meme. I'm gonna make that tonight. That's gonna be on my Twitter tonight. It's gonna be a picture of Coffee Penny with Dante Fowler. <laughs> sure, you ain't gotta do that. All you gotta do is just find a picture of Dante Fowler. He already in position and comes to hand <laughs> position every time he pass rush. Man, trash. <laughs> the the tackles are grasshopper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He does. It, like, he, he's always. Every time he's there for a tackle, he's like you said, he's always jumping. It, it like I have no idea why he jumps. It's like, bro, what is wrong with you? you it's like, there, right? it's like he, you know what's funny? It's like it's like his cleats don't stick. Like he he ain't got no grip on his cleats, and like he just slip and like jump in the air, like get regain his balance or something. Like I, like he uh, gonna, uh, you know what's gonna be funny? One day he gonna jump. One day it's gonna be an old lineman just. Throw him on the ground. It's gonna be, it's gonna be one day. He's just gonna get body slammed, and they gonna fit, and it's gonna be legal. It's so funny because like it's so ugly in the trenches. You can get beat up all game. Like I done got punched in my rib cage all game, and the ref ain't say nothing to me. I done told the ref I'm getting punched in my rib cage. He just laugh about it. Like it's stuff like that. Like bro, like it's so ugly. He gonna get slammed with somebody gonna grab him in the air. They nobody's grabbed him in the air yet. They they just ain't ready to see him jump. Somebody go watch him jump one day. They go slam him, and I'm just sitting there. Ask if they're wearing a cup, say yes. The old yeah, because they're gonna they are gonna test that theory. So just tell them you're wearing one. All right, save yourself a whole lot, a, a whole lot of trouble. I did. Oh, <laughs> Poe, I forgot. But Poe was a dominant. But Poe was so good, bro. Like these. He just got he got too big. I think Poe just couldn't maintain his weight. That's another thing about big guys. Like that's why people say about talking about Jordan Davis conditioning. Y'all don't I think people don't understand. Y'all don't if y'all don't know the story, Jordan Davis came to college at like 375 and had to lose weight to make the team. Kirby Damn. made that weight. 375? He was that mo that motherfucker was on the Leonard Davis side of the game with that. <laughs> He, oh, he was like, he was, I think it was like some. I, I gotta find the exact weight, but I remember the story. They told his story during one of the games. He was so big that Kirby said, "When you get to Georgia, if you don't lose so many weights, you ain't gonna be able to stay here." Like it was something mm -hmm. to that degree. Wow. But I know about the clothes, so I got one more question. Thirty pounds because he's he's looking great and evidently he's playing great. Because, I mean, that he, he doesn't move like a, what, 350-pound man? No. 
so yeah. the, the the last question I had is since people are, you know, talking about there's so much defensive talent in this draft. Now this is just hypothetically, would you be opposed to us drafting Sauce Gardner? I I, I will only say yes because of the money issue. Um, you can't afford. You got AJ to real. AJ is gonna get a hundred million. Hello, Gabe. Yeah. And about time. Yeah. About time you sauce is really becoming to his own. If he becomes a top corner, um, AJ is gonna. You know, he, he's gonna. So I, I don't. I. That's that's difficult. You're definitely gonna. You're gonna need a guy like a. Um, it's going to be a compliment to Terrell and a guy that could, because in this league, you can't keep two good corners. You can't keep two good corners. So you're going to need mm-hmm. rotational guys that's going to be able to. Um, well, but and subject if, to rotation, I mean, Isaiah Oliver hasn't played too badly this year, uh, even if you want right. to play him in as more of a kind of nickel and dime package sort of guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I reckon he can definitely contribute. So this was, yeah. really, but I think I he's talking about far as more as outside because the only team that I can think that have two good outside corners are the Ravens, and that's with Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters. But Marcus Peters, he hurt for the season. So, yeah, so. yeah, they haven't paid. That's only because they haven't paid Lamar yet. <laughs> so one of those guys gonna have to go, <laughs> right? Because Marlon Lamar about to get broke. He about to be broke something proper. So he's about to get about two hundred million. So again, like I, I, I like the idea, but the money in the NFL is it's it 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 it, it dictates how you can build the defense because it's an offensive driven league, and most of the offensive players get paid a lot of money. So it's like having two good corners in the league when you we need a pass rush on top of it. I like. I just don't see us drafting um, Sauce. I would love it if he falls into the second round. That's perfect for us. Mm-hmm. Then you go after him. But Sauce is good. He's the first round. That dude. Yeah, he's going. Yeah, he's going. Melly, you know, it's funny have him ranked number five though. Like that's the wild thing about it. Like he's ranked. Hey, Mike done told four. y'all about them PFF grades. Yeah. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So this this is a quote from 2019. This is Kirby Smart talking about Jordan. He said Jordan comes and works cardio more than anybody else we've got. This is when he was at he was this is his sophomore year. This is when they say he he was because they were saying he was struggling with his weight. Um, you know, I mean he had a bet, you know, he got hurt in tech when he played the Sugar Bowl, but he hurt his back before the Sugar Bowl. But he was struggling with his weight his whole career, basically. So you know, like when you think about it, you're big, you gain weight faster. You know, like if you big and you really if you still can work out, but he gains a lot more muscle now. I think a lot of his mass now is muscle, and that's the scary part about it. So like, basically he, he, he was Zion Williamson. Williamson. Yeah, like Zion, like how Zion but Zion is just fat now. Like he ain't <laughs> Zion, Zion, Zion that ate it, he's about to eat his way out the league. <laughs> This man, this man got, he just, another good point he here from he's suggesting that we pay our AJ up with his former teammate and Andrew Booth Jr. That would be pretty fire. That would be I like that too. And that's the thing about it. Like it's this this draft class is so deep defensively that you you're really not gonna miss. We got two second round picks and one first. Yeah. Really and truly, mm-hmm. that, if we go defense three players. And we draft and this what we saw last year, like that draft class last year, all those guys have performed at least once or twice this year. And we know Kyle Pitts is always gonna perform. But like even the later round picks have performed to a point where we're like, okay, those guys are solid. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. imagine what'll happen if we go in this draft with another good draft class. Right. With money. That's that's mm-hmm. how I put it. Right. With, the, with the three first, well, the, the three picks in the early rounds, I would probably, if it was me, uh, well, I, I did a mock draft recently. I mean, I took Jordan Davis round one, Nicobe Dean with my first pick in round two, and then Daniel Fatalele. I think we really need to bolster that offensive line, oh. but we definitely need to to get some more bodies that can ball on that defense. Um, 
Foyer's great, Terrell's great. We've got a few players that could be something with a little bit of work, but defence is where we need to make the, the biggest adjustments, I think. Um, and then maybe look at a tackle before it gets too late. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah you, you're right at that point because we don't know how long Jake got. We really mm-hmm. don't. Exactly. Right. So, you know, you got to go. You you want to at least have a guy that knows the system. If Jake, it might be two years. And Jake, you I pray to God it don't have him. But Jake might just have a major injury one night, one time, and you ain't got nobody to back him up. Like, yeah. they don't know the system. You got to go sign a free agent. So, you want a guy in your system that learn. It's the same. Let's think about college football, high school football. We get these, you get freshmen in. You get these young guys in, what do you do at high school? When you a freshman, you play JV, but you still learn the same offense as the varsity team. It might be a little bit more simplified. When you go to college, you ain't got JV, but you still practicing with the with the seniors and you still learning from them. You learn a little tools and tricks from them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's stuff like like you you gonna need those guys. You're gonna have to, you know, we love Jake. I've, I've always loved Jake. Jake was my first Falcons autograph when I grew up. He's the free when I went my first time going to Flowery Branch. Jake Matthews was my first uh, autograph, so I always uh-huh. love Jake for that. So you know, you gotta you gotta get him. You gotta think about what is going to be for Jake. And I hate to say it like that, but you know, it's it's slowly going to be a time where he's going to wind down and not want to play no more. Look at his family. Look how look how fast Clay retired. We never. I didn't think Clay was going to retire when he retired. He retired. Like, it's it's a bloodline with them, bro. Like it's is and you know that you want to protect your body as long as you can. And he played he's played for a while now, and it's like, okay, Jake, what you you want what you want to do? So it's 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 a sad it, it's sad when you draft players and you like and you know like like Roddy White when we drafted Julio, we kind of sort of knew Roddy was slowly winding down, even though he stayed on longer than we thought, but like. Slowly winding down to get another receiver in the BY receiver number one. So it's like you know when this transition is gonna happen, and you know we draft a tackle this year. We know Jake. I just want to learn. I just want these guys to learn. These young guys got to have veterans to learn from, and they got to be good veterans. And that's 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 you get a tackle now to learn from Jake Matthews. You gonna have a solid tackle when he finally starts. I've, or both Jake and the guard because somebody needs to seriously teach Jalen Mayfield how to fucking pull. He's he's not done it that much, but when he tries to pull it as a comical sight. Uh, if you want yeah, to yeah, that, right, right, tackle yeah, playing yeah, left sure. guard, so. yeah, 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 he, 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 he dominant man playing left side, bro. It's it's hard mm-hmm. out there. He getting right. killed out there, but I mean, he, yeah. he got him playing left guard. He been playing right tackle his whole life, so yeah. I mean that's the. And then he played his whole year. So, I mean, he a year away from football and then got drafted and had to go play in the NFL. I was going to say, that's why that Matt Gonnell and Josh Andrews injury hurt so It it, it hurt, but it it, hurt. I'm going to to the the little Falcons room. So, I'm going to pause the cam and Mike, and I'll be back in just just a moment, boys. Okay. All right. What you finna say, K Styles? I was about to say, yeah, it, it hurt, but it helped at the same time. Because yeah, for, now, the, for the young guys to get experience. Yeah, 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 it helped too, because now you now you give them that experience at that left guard spot. Like I said, we don't know what the hell's gonna happen this off season, but they might surprise the hell out of all of us and pull uh, a move off we didn't even know, we right. didn't even think about. Uh, we gotta be prepared for that. That's and that's mm-hmm. why I don't want to set on a position. We don't know. He, like I said, they could very well say, "All right, this Calvin Ridley situation isn't as bad as we all think it is." I, I still think it is that bad, but they <laughs> might. I say, I told you, I said, I say he gone. Oh, we know. I, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, we know that. <laughs> See, but here's the thing: if you trade, if you trade Calvin Ridley, you save eleven million dollars on the cap. You so, save that, yeah. So, so that's you know. why that's why I say he's out of here because that eleven million dollars they can bring in somebody else they can control. Right, like, it's all mm-hmm. about control with coaches. They want to have their vision, and no one go against that vision. 
and right now Kevin really goes against that vision because he's not here. He's not here. It's obviously he's not on board for whatever reason. Yeah, because Young Thug and, and, and other buddy ain't cutting it, man. <laughs> young Thug and uh, Desi Banks. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the fact we made that man, here, man. man. Who, who thought, like, okay, yeah, let's get those two guys to be our, our faces of Atlanta for when we do media stuff. I'm like, bro, y'all could have chose somebody a lot better than them two. <laughs> oh my God. I told you they look like entertainers. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you, you should have heard. You, you should have heard Mike before. during that New England game in the space. Boy, he was cussing them receivers out. He said, "This." Oh, is I already right. know. Uh, oh, 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 look, I already know. He got to tell me they, twice. Uh, we, uh, oh my we God. had these conversations all the time, bro. Like, bro, like, bro, like, <laughs> like I already, I already know exactly what he said. I already know the exact tone he used. Boy, that man almost left the space when when them receivers ran into each other. <laughs> Boy, you should have seen my oh face. But you better be glad I wasn't in the space because my face when I saw that. Sh- well, my but I just I just dropped. I said, I, I just it was like it was like that that meme like. Really, nigga? Y'all <laughs> <running through each other. laughs> oh my god! Hey man, let's get the last thoughts, man. Um. Anybody want to go first now? You want to go first, ATM? <laughs> no, nah, I'll let you. I'll let you have. Uh, I'll go first. Um, final thoughts. Sunday's a big game. No matter if we make, you know, we might not make the playoffs. I don't really care. Um, we got to beat the Saints. We need a season sweep of the Saints. I don't. I don't care about anything, anything else. I told my sister, the Saints fan. I told her we can go two and two and and fifteen. Two way would be two and sixteen now. As long as we beat the Saints twice, I'm happy. So, you know, <laughs> you gotta, we gotta, you make sure like this game, we gotta beat them. We at home, bro. We gotta beat, I don't know, last time we beat them at home. So it's, it's time to, to get it. They need it, bro. They, this team needs to beat the Saints. Like just to end the year off right, we gotta beat the Saints. Like it just, it'll no, feel, no, it'll no, feel no, like no, this season no, will be nice. Right? Like, so, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, I appreciate Mike and, you know, K-Styles giving me the invite, as always. Um, y'all know I've, I've been working, y'all, so I, my, my schedule's been hectic. So y'all haven't seen me a lot. I haven't been doing shows. Slowly but surely, I'll get back into doing them. Um, we, we slowly and surely getting back into it, getting me a solid schedule. So I'll be, you know, morning shows. Um, I'm starting a radio show, y'all. Um with me and Vlad, me and Vlad are going to start doing radio shows. So, you know, y'all see Vlad in the comments talking all the time. You like what he's saying in the comments. Um, we were definitely doing radio shows together. We'll be starting doing live shows again soon so y'all can see our faces and see us talking emotions and all of that. But the radio shows will hold y'all down for a little bit till we get back on a solid schedule. Um, go over to FILA. Um, we just did the Atlanta United 2022 years, like goals of the year and stuff like that. So if you're a United fan, make sure you shoot, you know, shoot over there and li- listen to those guys. Got Ariel and Tommy. Um, and Fila's and Fila's like really back, y'all. Like it's gonna be back. We are gonna really start pumping content. Um, so definitely go over there, subscribe. Forever I love Atlanta sports podcast. Go over there, subscribe, and just pay attention. Cause it might not, it might not pop up, but you know, just turn your notifications on so you see it. Um, I'd just like to add in as well. Um, once again, thank you guys for bringing me on board. Uh, it's a great honour uh, to, as, as I say, put my my two pence across uh, as <laughs> kind of the the international contributor. Um, yeah, sir. It's 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 a huge a huge honour and I can't even begin to tell you how much it means to me. Um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank, uh, I've kind of brought three families together as it were tonight, so my friends that have come in from the other channels that I represent, so anyone who's here mm-hmm. from Sports Live in the ATL uh, or mm-hmm. the Northwest uh, Sports Fanatics for mm-hmm. life, brother. Uh, thank you very much for, for coming out, for supporting us. Uh, thank you. <laughs> We appreciate you, bro. We appreciate, yeah, you. definitely appreciate you. ATM? Well, I just want to uh, thank you, Mike and K-Styles, for allowing me to uh, jump on the show with y'all again. 
It was nice to talk football with you, uh, Mr. William Waddle. And for those in the comment section that that don't that are unaware, make sure you keep Miss Maggie T in your um thoughts and prayers, and um make sure y'all subscribe to uh, Just Man uh Six Man K Styles, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. How how many on we what we on the road to? We on the road to six hundred. Well, we're on the road to 1,000. we going to get 1,000 this year. Dad. <laughs> okay. we getting 1,000 this year. But I'm about 442 away from that right now. We'll have okay, so. your boy up when you get 441. I, I want the rubber being that 1,000 sub. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, four, one. I definitely appreciate that, man. So, 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 like I said, make sure y'all support Miss Maggie T, support K Styles, Twisted, Utah Sports, Mad Mike Sports, AFN, Fila, and also follow all of us on Twitter. If you want to see some receipts and stats, follow me on Twitter <laughs> at ATM0534. ATM the receipt, man. And um, <laughs> let's bring these broomsticks out and sweep these ants, man. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Uh, well, uh, let me say this real quick. Um, again, I want to uh, say this. Um, we have all the respect in the world for anyone suffering with mental illness. Um, I, I want to make that clear. It's a serious matter. It shouldn't be joked about. It shouldn't be used as a vice um, because there are people who really suffer. Um, I've had my bout with it, and that's why I'm so passionate about anyone who really suffers from it. So if I feel in any way, may, and I could be wrong about everything I said about Cavarelli. I could very be, I, I, could, um, I could be wrong, but myself, you, you know how I am. I'm passionate when I see something that may not, <laughs> I could be told y'all, but I'm mad enough to come back and say, all right, guys, I apologize. I was, I was way, I went way too far. And I think that's one of the main reasons why the world is where it is. Because if, if we got so many people with so much pride, they're not willing to admit when they're wrong. And that plays into mental and you know uh, mental illnesses and whatnot so let's be um as as i said earlier because if you guys saw my earlier rant on camera really it was not pretty, <laughs> <laughs> it was really pretty. i wouldn't eat shit, okay so <laughs> um yeah. but like i said at the end of the day I, I toned it down because he could very he could very much be going through a lot i don't know I, I can only speak on my personal thoughts. And these are my personal thoughts on the situation. Nothing more. I have no evidence. I'm not I don't I don't have a source like a lot of these people have. I don't have a source. I'm going off just my personal thoughts. Um, but again, we are very uh, we have channels. We've done shows, Kevin and I, where we're talking about CTE. We're talking about, you know, what athletes, wrestlers, um, People, uh, uh, you know, people that actually are, um, they are rugby players. I don't think a lot of rugby players get, we've seen, I've seen guys like, you know, Cesaro, Cesaro retired because of a lot of injuries in rugby and all types of things. Like, so it's a lot of people, it's a lot of people who've, you know, these full contact sports, like they suffer. So let's, you know, of course, be respectful. Everybody has their opinion, but when you're wrong, let's be man enough. Let's be woman enough and admit when we're wrong. So that that's my last thoughts. Let's be adults. Admit when we're wrong. When we did something wrong, be man enough to admit that you did. You, you said that you've done something wrong. That's what I got to say. We do finish it. up uh, on the extension mm -hmm. of what you were saying about mental health. Uh, I think this would be a great opportunity to put it out to the community. Um, if they're going to be hitting us up on Twitter anyway, uh, we know that everybody has their struggles. Um, we, are, we are not here to judge. We're a family. So if you do need the help of anybody um, from the team, then by all means, hit us up. 
Uh, we're here to help as much as we can. Uh, it's all love. It's no judgment. Um, so if you ever just need somebody to chat to, we're here. Absolutely. Give. Hey, man, you, you know, I always say, man, you're always grateful, man. Um, losing a lot of people this year already. Um, people, this COVID thing didn't, didn't hit a lot of people hard. Actually, I think this is the quickest COVID didn't hit somebody in a year. It's only it's only the yeah. 7th of January, and it seemed like it didn't hit worse than it did all of last year. Yeah. So everybody just make sure y'all be careful out here. Make sure you don't take nothing for granted out here. Hey, man, just live your life, man. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely appreciate everybody tuning in. Appreciate William, Money Man, ATM, TJ, LT for coming mm -hmm. on here with us. Um if y'all if you if y'all just now tuning in, if you haven't seen earlier in the show, we had the Dan Reeves um tribute. So you make sure y'all replay and watch that if you didn't we'll re -air it. To see that. We're gonna re-air it. We'll re-air it so everybody can see it again. Right. So hey, all I gotta say, man, is I just don't take any of this stuff for granted. And hey, just just be happy where you at. Hold your loved ones tight because you don't know when is going to be the last mm -hmm. time you get to hold them. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get the chance to put it across earlier because I was backstage, but uh, rest in peace to, to Coach Reeves. Uh, sorely missed uh, throughout the league, not just by Falcons fans. Uh, so it's been a, a real honour to join you guys tonight and to to help you put this across. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. So, hey, man. Until next time, y'all, as we say here at AFN, we ain't here to play. We here to stay. You ain't got to go home. But. Hell out of here. Oh, hey. Deuces. Rest in peace, Dan Reeves. Deuces. Yes, sir.